Welcome, everyone. This is Denise, and you're with Global Voice 2012. Today is Wednesday, the 27th of June, and we have yet another program with our man Drake. And um, uh, everyone, be seated for uh, an evening filled with uh, information that we're all going to need to use. Um, we will probably be having um, both Lady Dragon and Minuteman join us, and I want to let you know about just a few things before we get started. Um, um, first of all, uh, let me make sure, Drake, you're with us? Yes, I am. Okay, welcome, Drake, welcome. I'm just going to give the, the listeners uh, a couple of little bits of information before we get started, and that would be... Um, that we at the Global Voice 2012 have established a new chat room um, uh, because our uh, chat room on Blog Talk is already, we're 30 seconds into the program and already our room is full. We have established a new chat room. It is at globalvoice2012.us and then you need to go to the top of the page under forum and join the forum <coughs> at which case then you can join the chat room. And that chat room should be available to an unlimited number of users. We will have a moderator in there accepting questions for the program tonight under the guest name, Questions. Um, and you can private message on the chat the, the guest name, Questions, and, um, and then uh, your questions will be relayed to Drake on the program. Um, I want to thank everybody for your patience while we get this all set up. Um, and with that, um, we ha also I want to um, recognize and in invite in um, with us Kimberly, who is with us again. Um, she was lucky enough to have a day off <laughs> this, last, <laughs> this last time. And um, um, Kimberly is with us again this evening. Welcome back, Kimberly. Thank you, Denise. Much love to everyone, and I have a couple things to go over. First of all, the new chat room, congratulations, Denise. That is good. And I'm going to say I had a little bit of, it wasn't super intuitive, but we're going to work to move over there because it will be able to accommodate everyone. And so if you go over and get yourself signed in through the forum, then you'll find the chat and then there's also actually an embedded player for the show that is you know airing right now. So anyway, right now people can go over to globalvoice2012.us, click on forum, try to get yourself signed into the forum and follow the instructions. I I had a little bit of problem, but I finally figured it out and eventually we're going to be moving away from the vlog talk chat because it's only listen it's only limited to 500 people. So thank you. Good work, Denise. Uh -huh. Thank you. Actually, um, we have uh, two people, Carla and Mark, that have been working very hard to help us through this, and we want to all thank them for their diligent efforts and, and getting us up and going again. Thank you, Carla and Mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that, um, I, I think we have Drake uh, ready to... Uh, Can I say one more thing first? Sure, Kimberly. Yeah. Sure. One of the things, um, there is a charge in accommodating this Blog Talk radio channel. And so particularly to those who listen to the archive, but I'm also asking people who are listening live to go back to the archive after the show is over because it posts very quickly. And if you click on the video ad that's in the little video player, we get remuneration for that. And so I'm just asking, we're not asking for anybody to donate, we're just asking for you to click on an ad. Advertising is still part of the 3D model and it doesn't cost you anything and so that's a way that you can contribute without any out of pocket money. Um, like I said, if you're listening live, go back tomorrow, click on the ad, go click on a couple of ads, and I thank you very much for doing that. And the other thing I want to say before we get going is that I will be going and um, gathering up people that have questions and screening the calls, and I ask 
everyone that when they're not talking, if they please do their own mute button on their own phone, that helps to keep down the noise and confusion. Okay? Gotcha. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kimberly. All right. Okay, now we, I think we're ready to bring our man Drake in. Let's see. Yep, I'm just clicking on the button. Okay, you are live, Drake. Cool. Okay, and you um, just let us know when you want us to bring in um, your other guests, okay? Yes, I'll do that. Okay, okay thank you. Um, I decided to take some looks around. I did get a little uh, time in between the information I've gotten, which is enormous, uh, along with uh, other things that are happening. Uh, most people know that I'm involved with uh, the uh, collateral accounts and Neil Keenan, and uh, you're going to be amazed what's going to come out of all that. I've already been told. I was asked not to say anything uh, definitive until such time as there is a happening. And I'm going to leave it at that. Y'all can uh, chew on it, wonder about it, whatever you feel like you want to do with that. Um, in looking around, I've been finding a lot of questions about things. What is the relativity of this? How come that is, you know, would you bother posting this for? Uh, what's that got to do with this over here? And so I decided to put this show together in such a manner that uh, um, it would clarify things. Um <laughs> if uh, anybody <laughs> has a vehicle, I'm pretty sure that they also got seat belts. If your office chair you got one, you might want to get a long belt out and strap yourself in. Well, what I'm going to tell you tonight, after I get done with the correlation, uh, is going to rock your world a little bit. Uh, so, <laughs> bear that in mind. Uh, so, getting right into it. Um, there was a, me a meeting in Rio de Janeiro of the G20, and it was disguised as a um, combination of uh, finance, trade, things like that. Those things were mentioned. I can give them that much. I got hooked up with the spies that are in that room, so I got validation of some of the stuff before other people got it. And um, the basis of this is simple understanding. There's two things that went on that G20 meeting. One was Agenda 21 and its implementation, among many other items. Now, there's a PDF that's posted and it's 49 pages, and it is a global constitution that these people come up with. I understand uh, Hillary Clinton was uh, principal and principally involved in that, among others. So that'll give you an idea as to which way to go. I would have thought that her sister, Nancy Pelosi, would have been right there with her, but uh, apparently not. Um in that is called the future we want. No consideration for anything else, just what they want. And as you can tell by looking outside and at your bank account and the jump change you got in your pockets, you know what they're after. Uh, to add to that, I'm going to I'm going to put in a little information. The um, ideal was to drive everybody out of the forest off the land, out of the farms, and basically put together a apocalyptic uh, sections of cities. Uh, this, is, this is before they uh, crank up the FEMA camps, but also in conjunction with it. And you were going to live in a shipping container. Don't matter if you got 15 kids or not. Uh, they're going to stack these things up and provide iron stairs. And that's how it was going to be. Uh, these things came along with a report on the cattle cars outfitted with shackles and things of that nature that some people are aware of. A lot of people think this is conspiracy theory. Well, so much. You believe what you want. I'm not going to fool with your freedom of will. Uh, 
the FEMA camps have been added to a point where most people are aware of them. If not, you can look them up. There's plenty of websites that have got pictures, locations, etc. Now, that future we want is the basis, basic global constitution. A man by the name of Joe Miller out at the G20 meeting in his report. And it pretty much covers it as to what it was, how they were going to rule us, how they were going to basically um, control us. <coughs> the um, secondary part of this was something Obama did, uh, and that was to uh, play games. There's an old uh, executive order that's renewed every year uh, that can be called into activation at any time. And what it does is it puts the United States under a declared state of emergency. This gives extraordinary powers to certain individuals and certain uh, portions of our government. That is the only reason that that was declared, was so that the state of emergency powers could be used. This was the idea. Now, those are the, I don't know what you'd call it, the... Uh, that's the office part. And then you got the stuff in the field. Everybody heard uh, St. Louis, Missouri was going to get attacked, and maybe a couple other places. Well, I'm going to stay away from naming any other names, but I'm going to let you know that there were supposed to be several, not just one, several, um, like a dozen, and these were to foster a chaos, start rioting, so martial law could be declared easily under the emergency powers. Starting to fit together a little better, I would hope. So you got the global constitution, uh, you got an idiot in the White House declaring uh, an emergency, national emergency, you got the full outing in terms of the spies at the G20 meeting from uh, Joe Miller, and these false flag attacks. So, uh, my question to everybody, and this is pretty simple, uh, everybody knows about ETs. They also know about the attitudes about them. Yay, nay, go, stay, yeah, right, or whatever. Uh, some people call them, call them angels. Uh, some people call them BS. A lot of opinions, and they vary. But I'm going to ask you to remember a movie called Independence Day. They had some ugly aliens in that thing. Now, uh, I have been told <laughs> by uh, some of these uh, so-called uh, non-Earth entities that if you think that's ugly, you ought to see some of them that are really out there. Some of them will make you lose your lunch, from what I understand, in terms of what we're used to seeing. Now, <laughs> one of the things I stipulated with these ETs, they say they're going to come down and meet us. Oh, well, that's all well and good. Uh, you better be light. In other words, there shouldn't be too many of you at once. You need to look human so you don't freak people out too bad. And you need to be overtly friendly. And preferably have somebody that's already here that understands that you exist, uh, even though we're maybe not sure what to expect, uh, at least you can be uh, reasonable in terms of, uh, you know, not freaking everybody out. <laughs> um, that would not be cool. And uh, <clears throat> the reply I got was a giggle. They fully understand what we're dealing with and human frailties in reasoning. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, um, over the past few days, I've gotten some uh, extraordinary intel. Names, dates, places, happenings, things that are going on. Um, messages that are encoded into um, speeches by different people and things of that nature. I'm going to lump it all into intel. And what I was asked indirectly was to relay from our uh, United States military some messages. First, 
And I got this under A because it gets an A. I was told the cavalry is coming. Now, I want you to remember about John Wayne tooting the horn and the cavalry riding in to save everybody from whatever's going on. I'm serious about this. I want you to all really get that in mind. The second part of this, I got three three things that I was, I was asked to repeat to everybody. That was A, cavalry's coming. Da -da -da -da, you know all that. Okay, B, if needed, we will be contacted. In other words, all the militias out there listening need to pay attention. Go ahead about your business. Don't do anything extraordinary. Uh, and uh, yet, be available. I mean, there may be a, a situation where they're a little short on manpower and they need you to do something. Who knows? They don't for sure, but they say that they're probably not going to need civilian or militia participation in this. Ooh. Uh, that sounds like everybody and their mother-in-law is going to go to a party. Now, uh, I think everybody is probably aware of what the 4th of July means. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the movie, Independence Day, well, I had been thinking about this for a while, and it was a curiosity. And I've asked several other sources that I have other than this particular one that I got some of this information from and a couple of others. I asked mine and people outside the normal avenues of approach, and they validated each and every last little piece of it. They also added a bunch of information. Then they told me to shut up. I said, no, wait a minute. That's not cheating fair. My tongue's already sore from not telling stuff. You're going to have to quit that. <laughs> they kind of giggled, and they said, well, okay, here's what you can tell them. Da -da -da -da, the cowboy's on its way. B, if needed, we will be contacted, civilians and militia, okay? The suggestion, and I don't know how many people have gone to the displays and whatnot that you got over the holiday that's coming up, but um, I, I have seen some just awesome displays. Uh, timed music, uh, different colors just the right way. I mean, just extraordinary stuff they can do with uh, pyrotechnics. The United States military says sit back and watch the fireworks. Ladies and gentlemen, they're going to try to give us the best Fourth of July we have ever had. In other words, the cavalry is on its way. Things are in process. The happening is happening now. So hopefully not too many people fell out of their chairs or any of that, but um, I've been promising things for a while, and there's been uh, some iffies this and what ifs that, and how come they ain't seeing nothing. And supposedly, now, <laughs> according to this, uh, and a lot of websites and a lot of uh, blogs, Mass arrest. We're getting rid of the crooks. Da, 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 this and that. And okay, well, I'm going to suggest that uh, the military's idea of fireworks, um, I don't know if you've ever been to a military display, but uh, I was at one at Fort Benning, Fort Benning, Georgia, and I'll tell you, it'll knock your hat in the creek. It is totally awesome. They played uh, several... Um, Marching songs, patriotic songs, some religious, couple of religious songs, and the awesome display was perfectly timed to the music. When it said red, white, and blue, you got red, white, and blue, just exactly at the same time they said it. Old Glory waving in the wind, they actually made that happen up in the air. Now, <laughs> I don't know how they, you know, <laughs> you're talking about uh, somebody that's a whole lot better at uh, explosives than I am being able to do something pretty like that. Um, the explosiveness of this is very simple. One of the key elements that made this happen was the outing of the UN agenda on that global constitution of the future we want. The G20 meeting, as reported by Joe Miller, the extraordinary amount of uh, 
false flag attack warnings and questions and things of this nature, all of us, not just me, all of us, played a part in this. And <laughs> the cavalry is coming. If needed, we will be contacted and sit back and watch the fireworks. Now, <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen uh, Blue, Th Blue Thunder, uh, Precision Flying Unit. I don't know if anybody's ever seen, uh, uh, what do they call that, um, uh, White Nightmare. That's where they use um, white phosphorus, black airplanes, and the cover of night. You talk about beautiful, my goodness. Um, what we got is a situation of this. We have one. And I don't know. I don't know about y'all, but uh, I, I'm getting cold sweat. I know how real this is. And I will add something. There is um, supposed to be near proximity to this show and things people can see. Now you can keep a lot of things out of mainstream media, but if you have uh, a combinational mass arrest removal from offices uh, and other um, noticeable things going on, I feel quite sure that the mainstream media ain't going to have a choice this time. Uh, they've ignored everybody and uh, they've ignored people such as myself, whether I've brought out the truth, documented it or not, even some of the people on the blogs and whatnot have said, oh yeah, right, show me. Well, dude, you know, I gave you a PDF from the meeting, the future we want. Now, that PDF was written uh, <laughs> by Hillary Clinton. Now, <laughs> Jesse Ventura was on uh, Alex Jones. He says, he tells the military, remember your oath. I send out a letter, an open letter to the military. Dude, we've done everything we can. Where's yours? Well, <laughs> uh, yesterday and today, I got my answer, and um, I've been going crazy trying to keep this under my hat. Um, it's uh, it's the kind of thing you want to just run around the house going Yahoo. It's the kind of thing that makes you want to go shoot the shotgun out the window. Uh, you got some fireworks, set it off. Um, we have a combination of things in place. One of those is paperwork. Uh, some people like to question that, and they can go somewhere. Paperwork's been submitted, submitted correctly, and a majority of the states of the United States de declared themselves through declaration and notification that we are free. This has been done, okay? Some people are still working on a few other states trying to include all 50. That gives the military, the civilian authority, to take action against a government who is oppressive, if they so choose to do so. And this is a decision I've been waiting on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you want to see the Marines come up over the over the hill instead of the enemy. Now you get to see them come. So you got this. Uh, you got all this information. Uh, <laughs> and I was listening to Alex Jones a little bit today, and uh, he's getting righteous. I mean, he is not holding back. Uh, used to be, he was sort of—he's kind of come off like a scaredy cat. And quite frankly, uh, my understanding was that he had been intimidated. Well, he found out uh, today, uh, in the last couple of days, some of the similar information I'm giving you now. Uh, they told him not to say anything. Why particularly did they ask me to do this? I have no idea, but I'll do it. Any kind of service from my country, that's fine. I don't care if I gotta clean the toilet or shoot something. It don't matter. Whatever they whatever area they can use me in, I'm ready to serve. Um there's a lot of people out there who've been on the battlefield uh a long time ago and recently. Um what this means to you is that uh, people who have not gotten the assistance they were supposed to have had in the first place according to the contract that the military made with you is now going to be honored. 
you can take your uh, pre-existing conditions and stick them. That's for starters. Um, I would suggest people go get some cash out of the bank so you got a little on hand, uh, up to you as to how much you think you might need. Supposedly, there's not supposed to be any interruption, just like I've been t- telling you. This was also reaffirmed to me to, in the last couple of days. Um, everybody's looking for that uh, big green, green glob of stinky to hit the rotating oscillator. I've been given a day, and I ain't going to say it. I will say it this week. Now, I hope that fries some egg, and I hope some people get all upset and go, eh, he said that stuff before. Well, cool. That don't matter to me. I really honestly don't care. Yeah, Everybody is entitled to their opinion. Say what you want. I'll defend to the death your right to say it. That's called freedom of speech. Now, here's how simple this is. They actually removed or turned down or turned off a website because it was being nasty to the government. Ooh, can't have that. Well, my answer to that is very simple, and it has always been this way with me. If the First Amendment don't work, use the Second. I mean, um, and I'm not telling everybody to go out and cheat somebody either, but um, I believe that the military finally got the message that uh, there are enough people who are mad, frustrated, and had enough that if they didn't take action real quick, we're going to. Now, some of the timetables for some of these things. I'll give you an example. In fl- false flag, that false flag attack was supposed to happen October, just before the election, so that there didn't have to be an election. Ob- Obama, big ears, uh, <laughs> could uh, maintain office under emergency powers, and you have a dictatorship. Um <clears throat> I don't think their plan is working too well. Um, Those false flag attack situations have been taken care of. There's been a whole bunch of things removed from bridges and other infrastructure that were supposed to take it out or interfere with it in some way or another. Uh, Along with, and this is going to, this is a nice one, nuclear devices. Woo, yeah, uh huh, mushroom cloud stuff. and I want, I want I, the reason I'm telling you people. I want you to be aware. This has been, if you can imagine, trying to find uh, an explosive device about the size of a juice can, oh maybe a silver dollar in, in big around and maybe two inches long, with a little radio transmitter in it, buried in concrete in a bridge or a support or something, uh, or a, you know a dam. I mean, anywhere in the country. Now, you think about the logistics of that. They got 99.9% of them. There's one-tenth of 1% that are still out there, yes. It is a possibility that they may be able to, but I don't think they're going to be able to. Um, when you're stripped, naked, and given a, a orange jumpsuit to wear, um, there's only certain places that you can hide the uh, clicker for one of those, and I'm pretty sure they're probably going to look there, too. So, um, rising up the bow and play your fiddle hard, because it's hitting the fan in big chunks very shortly. And um, <laughs> that basically is the uh, fastener seat belt uh, situation. The military, the United States military, and it ain't just anybody. These are high-level people that sent this message. Sit back and watch the fireworks. If needed, we will be contacted. And the cavalry is coming. I mean, great coogly woogly. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't know uh, about you. I've been working on this stuff for twenty years, and it's finally happening. Here in the near future, I'll be able to put my guns away. Here in the near future, we won't have to worry about somebody wanting to come get you in the middle of the night or do some something funny to you in the dark. Um, hopefully, and this is one of the things that was stipulated by the military, hopefully these people will peacefully surrender. Hopefully there won't be bloodshed. 
Hopefully nobody will have to pull the trigger. However, I've also been told that there won't be any hesitation. You don't get second and third chances. You either comply or you're done. Pretty strong stuff. And, <laughs> my goodness. Um, so, when you think about the, the fact that we, this group, the, the, all these awesome people who listen, who have been paying attention, who have been watching what's going on, some of whom actually understand the intricate details of it, have been passing this on, spreading it around like free beer. And, ladies and gentlemen, it worked. Uh, I do feel, to an extent, that I owe an apology a little bit to the United States military because I've been pushing on them. But I want to I want to note it. It was a respectful push. It's like Jesse Ventura saying, "Remember your oath." Well, you remember that oath. Obviously, there's a whole lot of people out here that understand the oath of service. Um, most military people take. Now, I was asked not to say a whole lot of things about uh, uh, different situations by a number of people over the past few days. Uh, this includes extraordinarily high-level people, as well as your lower-level people. Um, but I'm going to throw this in the mix. Uh, most of what you've seen have been a combination of different things. Most of what has been going on is not easy, easily seen. And I would like to, everybody to think about this. Do you know of somebody who is a globalist? Somebody is actually a globalist. I want you to think about that term. I want you to think about what that is, what they do, how they act, things of this nature. Um, there's a lot of globalist companies. Uh, J.P. Morgan the one. I mean, among a dozen or so others. Um, the... Uh, FEMA camps are all ready. And I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> we go in, change the guard, and usher in a new generation. Um, the globalist army I mentioned the other day that is supposedly being formed by the G20, um, ain't going to happen. And I'm going to tell you why. There's a few reasons to this. Number one is financial. And I want everybody to pay attention to this. It's real simple. Our country is in the, in the trash can. In case nobody happens to have noticed, you can't get a job no matter who you are or what you do, uh, simply because there ain't any. The reason there ain't any is because it has been intentionally done to us. Now, this is just like the planning for the Great Depression, all the recessions we've had, the bubbles, artificial bubbles. You had dot com, you had housing, you got this, you got that. Uh, these are all planned. Nothing's left to chance. Uh, <laughs> you want to get into the funny part about it? Look at 9-11. That wasn't by chance. And there are a whole bunch of people out there that bet that uh, airline stocks would go down. That certain insurance companies would lose money. Now, how on earth would they know? And there's only two, three, four of these out of all them hundreds of stocks and bonds and insurance companies and airlines, they pick two or three, and they're right. And there's a whole load of these big investors. You look that list up, you'll find out what the, who the globalists are on a personal basis. Um, we've got um, a declaration of uh, two things. Obama says, Leave my Latino friends alone. That's simply a political move for votes. The second part that people aren't aware of, possibly, is the amnesty for 18 to 30-year-olds. That was declared by Obama. Now, 18 to 30-year-olds, does that sound like a military age to anybody? If it doesn't, there's something wrong with your thinking. you got to catch up. Um, now, the other day I said our military would most likely back us look to me like they said to heck with it they want to be relevant and so they're taking the lead and uh, I get the feeling that they're probably pretty upset 
I know that um, there were a lot of people that were falsely accused in uh, recent uh, scandals involving Secret Service, Delta Force, and several others. And I did some checking, and I'm going to tell you right now, not guilty. Now, they have what they call lead uh, preparatory staff that goes in before a presidential visit. And I sort of forgot to mention of the motel rooms and hotel rooms full of cocaine um, <clears throat> and whatever sexual des uh, dessert you might want to go with that, uh, exorbitant expenses, among other things, of these lead teams somewhere in the neighborhood of, oh, three to five times what uh, was spent on uh, security total. I mean, you know, give me a break. And there's not as many of them. I mean, you know, uh, top of the line only. So we've got a situation where the Rockefellers, yeah, I'm going to name a name. Rockefellers are the ones that, are, that fostered this. They are part and party guilty of treason. I understand that Mr. Bush and family were included in this. Yeah, I'm naming names. I had enough. I don't know about y'all, but um, I can only take so much. Apparently, the military decided the same thing. <laughs> the cavalry is coming. If needed, we'll con we will be contacted if they need extra support or a little help or something. And sit back and watch the fireworks. Ooh, goosebumps. So basically, um, and I hope this uh, curdles milk. I hope that uh, some of the people that uh, have called me a flat liar when they didn't even bother to uh, check uh, documentation, uh, et cetera, are enjoying this news. I'm looking for a ho I'm looking for how a holiday. Now, uh, we probably got a few days yet before um, the fourth of, fourth of July. And I would suggest that uh, we're finally going to have something that really is a celebration. Now, the military did not say they were buying the beer, so don't necessarily expect that. And I would suggest bring your own popcorn and burgers. The party, though, uh, this time is supposed to be for real. And for real meaning uh, it's been told to me that it's ready to happen. That's why I'm saying this. It ain't my idea. This ain't a false flag. And I ain't playing games with people. There's a lot of people out there who believe what I say. There's a lot of people who don't. Some just don't care. I think the, the don't care is probably are the majority. Most people, as so long as you don't uh, interfere with them being able to take a dump in the morning, have some coffee, and make it to work, they don't really care. Oh, the lights work. That's good. Uh, <laughs> well, these are the people that are going to have a rude awakening. And, well, some of us who know what's going on are going to be set in a position of trying to inform these people who didn't believe it the first time at all and probably still have major doubts that, hey, did you notice what happened? Did, did, you, did you watch any of the news channels at all? Uh, did you see that? I mean, you know, you get the, the silver bracelets and the whole nine yards and they're marching the turkey over and, and dumping them in the, in the wagon. Uh whether that will actually happen on uh, TV, I'm not sure. It wasn't given to me. But when they say sit back and watch the fireworks, I get the sneaking suspicion that they're going to start advertising uh, in a way that can't be ignored anymore. It's sort of like one of them deals you can't refuse. Uh, you got a choice, sir. Put the gun down and come with us. Or we pop your cookie right here, flip your flapjacks permanent, and that's the end of it. Either way you're going, now which is it? And that's the choice these people are going to have. The foreign troops are no match, never have been, never were, any, never came close to anything our military's got, period. The United Nations can uh, go spit. What happened in the G20 was a split between, speaking of spitting, <laughs> a split, it's on a financial basis, between the United States and the rest of the G20. The majority of the G20 had a spokesman who basically told uh, Mrs. Clinton that uh, we cannot afford to expand our forces and resources 
on your business. That leaves it up to what's left here. Ladies and gentlemen, there ain't near enough of them, first. Second, they do not have the passion of fighting for their own backyard because they don't believe in backyards. A lot of them don't even got families, so they ain't got nothing else to fight for either. Um, I don't know their uh, personal selection selectivity in terms of uh, mating procedures, but those I think are probably doubtful in my opinion. I don't give them credit for very much. So, what I'm looking at, real simply, is um, I want to see what kind of fireworks display we're going to get. I want to see the Main Street News light up. And I want you guys to understand that this is going to happen a whole lot sooner than you think it is. I've been saying things are going to happen, and I've been saying two weeks. Lord, I'm tired of saying that. Oh, it hurts me. It is painful. That is the most. Uh, hmm. ah, I can. I can't think of a cuss word that covers it. It's so distasteful in terms of it's what I had to do. I didn't have a choice, and neither did anybody else. This time, I ain't saying two weeks. <laughs> I'm saying very soon. Um. One of the places and one of the things I found out is that there are opposing forces. And I found out one of the things that uh, has been being done over the past week is to limit the capability of those forces. Every time they set a certain timing for um, practice runs, uh, or whatever you might want to call it, with uh, military aircraft, they've been met with superior forces and told to land. Now think that through. There goes the air power. All they got is a bunch of people that don't speak English for an army. Um, and no, they don't. And most of them don't speak Spanish either. By the way, most of them are not Latino or black. These are. Uh, Pirates, primarily. Um, they call it shore scum. And you go skimming with a net and catch a few, and, you know, here's a gun, man. Can you point at that thing and hit it? Uh, oh, yeah, I can do that. Come with me. We'll get you some dry clothes. Um, <laughs> it's sort of like dragging a wine bottle down the street to pick up some labor or the bag of pot or something that looks like it. I mean, there's, you know, there's a variety of funny, uh, supposedly funny stories goes with this. Um, I understand all, all things uh, being equal that these things have changed. Uh, what used to be a commonality to uh, people in my day have now become some prescription uh, drugs that uh, they're robbing medicine cabinets, taking old people's medicines and whatnot, and running off with them, getting stoned. When the guy, poor guy goes to get his pain meds because he got dropped on his butt real hard in a war somewhere, uh, he's short about half, three quarters of them. And believe me, the people that issue those things are pretty tight, and they do not like that at all. Generally, uh, they'll tell a person that uh, gets medications of that particular sort that if they want to continue to receive those particular medications, they're going to have to uh, heave up the information as to who they think took them. And then they go check them out. I go find out whether or not they probably were at a certain place at a certain time or whatever. They're going to find out that, uh, you know, what's a teenager doing running around with five grand in his pocket? Uh, no, it ain't a paycheck. Um, so it goes from there. Um, after all this information, I believe uh, Lady Dragon had some information today that is good news. And... Okay, There's Drake, something you want about her website. Ahead, you want me to go yeah, ahead? Yeah, in a minute here. Okay. Yeah, in a minute. Drake. One of um, one of the things about Lady Dragon, I know she um, is involved in some stuff that bothers some people. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that it's sort of like a any gambling house. I'm going to give you an example. Um, a gambling house 
gets reported. And by report, I mean you have certain odds, whether it's cards, roulette, uh, back rack, it doesn't matter what the gambling game is. Um, <laughs> you'd be surprised how much money changes hands on dominoes. Um, but each family house has a report, be that a 21 dealer um, or whatever, as to what the odds are supposed to be for the customer to win. Now, anybody who is not too bright will think that they have a real good chance to win. That is uh, not quite correct. First of all, you got a minimum 50% odds for the house before when you walk in the door. You lose you lose another uh, 30% at any of the given games. So you got only a 20% chance maximum. And this is if you're really good at what you do. This is like 21 knowing it. This is like, uh, well, making a pass on a dice table seven times in a row, eight times in a row. They got astronomical odds. But if you know how to play your odds correctly, and you know what the cards are going to be probably, um, you combine those two odds and you get a pretty good indication as to who's over what. Sometimes you don't win. But an honest house does two things. It reports its winnings. It's above board. If somebody uh, spends money there, uh, they treat them right. I mean, you get some, a lot of the times it's free room, uh, free meals. I mean, it varies. Um, but they have a reputation. Right now you've got a, an extraordinary problem with most gambling houses in that they are not honest. This goes to reporting. If they're really reported for what they really are, nobody would go there. Just that simple. You want a halfway, halfway chance to win anyway. Um, it's kind of like pitching quarters or something or dimes or whatever, nickels, <laughs> playing with that lunch money. Um, the deal is this. The report as to this condition, that condition, whatever, dealing with sports is one of the things that Lady Dragon does and does extraordinarily well. She finds out information that others don't have. A little bit of a, I'll say a cramp in a horse's leg it makes a difference between whether or not you get a triple crown winner or not. And that's been evidenced recently. And I'm not saying Lady Dragon had a report on that. But that's an example. Um, it gives you a little bit of an edge if you can tell by the look on the, on the dealer's face that something ain't right. <laughs> You know when to fold them, know when to hold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. Real simple. Anyway, um, Lady Dragon and I have had a lot of intimate uh, conversations in terms of uh, lifestyle, beliefs, what we do. And she's thrown herself into this totally and completely. And for that, I thank her, first of all. And secondly, um, she's been totally above board and honest about everything that she's been doing. We work together to make sure that uh, her French understanding does not get in the way of her English writing so that things are clear and stated correctly. She helps me with information. And I'm not going to say that all this information um, is mine because none of it is, not, a, not, a, not even one piece of it. It's stuff I've gleaned. It's stuff I've been given. It's stuff that has been given to me to be outed. And I got no real uh, honest idea as to why they decided to pick me, but so be it. Anyway, Lady Dragon, we got some news today. Hello, Drake. Yes, we do. We actually have positive news today. Okay, what you got? Well, I have uh, two very interesting news here. Um, the FBI uh, actually was... Uh, on the CNN, imagine that. FBI nationwide child prostitution sweep leads to 104 arrests and they save 79 children. This uh, operation has been uh, uh, in uh, over 57 cities with uh, involving uh, local and federal officers. So the the law enforcement the people have freed children in a range of 13 and 17 years old. 
And uh, there was one young girl that was interviewed. Sorry about Sam. Uh, she was interviewed, and she was uh, forced to prostitution when she was the age of 11. So I think it's a very good news that the FBI have done something really good here. Hey, Drake? Yes, I think that's excellent. I'd like to hear more of something like that any day of the week. Um, uh, I do have a suggestion about what the FBI might want to do with the bad guys. They used to have a thing called stocks. That's where your hand and feet and head go in it. And um, in some in some countries, they still use them. The rule is this. If they perpetrate a crime like what is being talked about here, the parents can do anything they want to them except kill them. After a certain period of time, and the parents get tired of mutilating or doing whatever they feel like they want to do if they decide to do anything at all, then they're carted off to jail. I just thought I'd throw that in. Go ahead, Lady Dragon. Yeah, uh, so that's the news about that because I think it's very important because uh, if, uh, if they, they, they work together, uh, and this is what we always talk about, about working together, and they say they estimate at least 100,000 American kids are learning to prostitution every year. So it's actually good news as well that uh, CNN has put this on, uh, on their website. So I thought that was a very interesting news that I got this morning. Also, yes, I always, yeah, I always, I also got another news okay. concerning Ron Paul. Uh, uh, you know that uh, he's been talking about the feds uh, for a while now, but this morning uh, they passed into the house uh, and eminently the uh, audit the Fed uh, bill that uh, Ron Paul has been working on for a long, long time. So um, this is a very also positive news. Hey, eh, Drake? Yes, it is. That fits directly into a whole bunch of things. You wonder why the feds are upset and scared? Oh, they're going to inspect their underwear. <laughs> and uh, good no <laughs> Lord knows what they're going to find. You got anything else, Lady Dragon? Uh, for, for, uh, I just want to expand a bit on that. I think it's very important because I think people are seeing the light of the thing because it was uh, 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 anonymous. So that means that nobody complained uh, or many did anything. So, you know, when uh, Ron Paul was starting with that, he, 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 it was always uh, met with uh, adversity. But now, wow, it's like everybody has seen the light this morning, you know? So I think people well, got telephone. Pardon? Well, um, one of the things about uh, politicians is they'll tell you anything and do what they want to do. As long as they get elected, they don't care. Yes. They see the writing on handwriting on the wall, ladies and gentlemen, um, and uh, it ain't good, and they're not in favor. Uh, this means that a whole bunch of them who are dirty are going to go, and I mean that literally, going. Um They'll be lucky, uh, some of them, to retain their lives, this I know for a fact, uh, part of the information I've gotten recently. The um, interesting part about this is that now people are beginning to understand that, uh, as Lady Dragon says, the light of day is beginning to dawn. Now, right now, the sun's going down where I'm at, but um, it's still pretty bright out. Um, you heard a lot of these... Um, ET sites mention uh, uh, love and light, and there's uh, something I'm going to mention. It's in the Bible, and it talks about light. It says, it asks the question, do you put a light, which is a candle, in the room and cover it with a basket? Or do you put the candle on a nice high place where it can cast the most light? And anybody who doubts how much a small source of light, how much darkness it can chase away, needs to darken their house tonight. Get you a birthday candle and light that sucker and take a look around your room. The whole room lights up on one little bitty 
flame at maybe a, is an inch or so. Awesome. That's the principle. That's the idea. This is where the the goodness, uh, people taking care of business, comes in. Um, such as Ron Paul. He never gave up. Uh, I applaud that man for his tenacity. I really do. Um, no, he's not absolutely squeaky clean, but he's a lot better than anything else I've seen. And that includes both of these, quote, candidates, one already in office, and there's a got there, but uh, is in there anyway. Then you got uh, the, You know what was interesting also in that news, uh, Drake, is the 267 people that voted for that. So they know the writing on the wall. They know that uh, they better be on on the side of the people or else uh, they're going to be outside the door. You know what I'm saying? Yep. No. Which is a good, a good sign, a very good sign, I feel. You know? Well, one of the jokes that's been going around for a long time would be the one about uh, this uh, mad scientist in his lab, and he discovers this stuff. And he goes, wow, this is awesome. And he goes and tests it, and it works. And he says, ooh, boy, am I going to have some fun. He mixes him up about three, four gallons of this stuff, and it'll take very much of it now. But he mixes up a, a good batch of it, and uh, he gets his, gets in his old uh, oil burner and runs over to Washington, D.C., and dumps it in the water supply, and it makes the politicians tell the truth. That's an old joke. Applicable. Unanimous vote to audit the Fed. I want you to think about that, House of Representatives. Okay, Senators, now what do you do? Do you want your job? you want to go to jail? What's your call? I will suggest that this thing probably will get a unanimous vote in the Senate as well. Now, by the time it gets there, uh, I understand we're going to already have it be seeing some action. So it may not be, it may not take anything more than the signature of uh, Speaker of the House, the signature of uh, the leader or minority leader of the Senate, in order to make this law. I want everybody to consider not having some of the leadership that we've had that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Um, you got uh, federal law enforcement working with local law enforcement to make sure that uh, our kids are safe. I think that's pretty cool. I like that. I'd like to see a lot more of it, a whole lot more. What are, you got anything else, Lady Dragon? Yeah, I have a, something very uh, strange and special that happened yesterday. I didn't have a chance to tell you, but I thought it was positive to it, and it goes to what the FBI has done. Well, not the FBI, but I mean what is happening all of uh, all over the world that things are changing for a positiveness. There's uh, I'm on Twitter. There's a gentleman on Twitter called the Anon Message, and he always posts a message about the Anonymous. I'm not sure if this gentleman is with the Anonymous people or. But I know he posts messages about that. And yesterday, he came in the middle of the afternoon, and he says, oh, I have something to tell you. I have I have been uh, took, and they put me somewhere. They never wanted to give me my phone call. And I was held for at least a week, and then just bang, like this, they just released me. And he was really freaked out about the whole thing because he didn't know what he was took for by whom, and he didn't know... Why it was brought back by whom? So and it made a lot. It made a big impact on Twitter yesterday and still today. He got retweet, replied by everybody from all over the world. It was uh, it had a massive impact uh, uh, on the Twitter uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, so again, it's funny because I was saying, wow. Uh, uh, whatever happened, uh, I was discussing with Jeff yesterday afternoon, I said, whatever happened to this gentleman, uh, whoever had that gentleman in custody decided that, uh, no, 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 we don't want to hurt him, and they put it back on the street like this. So I'm saying that, you know, you you keep saying, and everybody keeps saying, there's people behind the scene that are working to help us. I think that was a very good uh, example, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Now, I don't know how many people have been watching the news at all lately, but uh, there's a, 
an impeachment vote coming up. Uh, in terms of uh, the ultimate result, in my opinion, um, it's a contempt vote. Goes against Eric Holder and some of the uh, Democratic Party are now turning against Eric Holder because he is uh, disrespecting the, uh, their offices and his own office and position by withholding paperwork. No reason to withhold it now. They did a little checking. There's no reason to withhold this paperwork. There's no national secrets involved, and the president is not involved directly in this paperwork. The problem is is that the president said executive privilege. This means that communications between uh, Department of Justice and the president is supposedly off limits. I'm going to suggest that uh, the president is an accomplice and needs to go down with his uh, <laughs> legal firewall, Eric Holder. But they're both at least guilty of that. And that vacates a couple of offices. Um, what else? Was there anything else, Lady Dragon, that you had off the top? Um, or is that pretty much it? Pretty much it. Uh, yes, that was pretty much it for now. Uh, yes, uh, it's been uh, very... Uh, um, oh, yesterday I was uh, on In Light Radio, and everybody was very uh, wishing you the best and everything. And everybody is uh, very positive in the outcome. And uh, you were talking the other day about people that uh, use their mind to do meditation and create a, a good world. Um, um, Cobra sent me a message saying, everybody be calm and don't get uh, provoked about anything. Uh, he has the same outlook as you, that everything's going to be fine. And everybody is working to send everybody positive, uh, uh, you know, wave in order for the outcome to be absolutely successful. That's excellent. That is excellent. Um, I would like to know if uh, Rick Light's around. Minute Man, is he on? Hello. Hey, how's it going, man? Pretty good. Remember, I told you I was going to have some of the you got me all excited. Hi, Miss Man. <laughs> Hello, Lady Dragon. How's my sister in Canada? I'm doing well there. About yourself? Oh, I'm trying to get along with it. We're dealing with a little heat out here and trying to get some work done at the same time, so I've kind of been a little out of the loop. <laughs> well, we're bringing you okay. in the loop now. <laughs> Yeah, I hear this, and uh, well, I'm I'm just real excited. Uh, I can't wait for well the fireworks to start. Uh, I love fireworks, and heck, the grander the display, the more entertaining they are. Well, one thing I was going to ask of you, and that's to get in touch with as many people as is possible, and let them know that if needed, they will be uh, contacted. Now. I recommended that uh, if the military needs assistance, if they do not have a direct contact in a certain area, that they contact you. So don't be surprised if you get a contact. Now, if you're not reachable on the phone and they need to make contact, they'll come out and see you. So don't freak out if you see a military vehicle coming up. To uh, run up I'm not right now, Brother Drake. You know that. Uh, that would be a welcome visit. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is that uh, that is a possibility. It's it, From what I was told, it's a slim one, but it's still there anyway. And I appreciate well, you know that. It's going to be an honor. I'm like you, Drake. It's going to be an honor to serve this nation any way that it's feasible to serve. So, um, are we anywhere near a break time? If you would like to be, that's easy to do. Okay. Uh, like why don't we take a little break, break? I... give everybody a chance to digest this a little bit, and uh, I'll make a quick synopsis. Um, I'm thinking that we could go into questions uh, after the break. Okay, because we got a chat room. We got two chat rooms full, and we've got about a hundred callers. <laughs> so, so imagine that. that. Questions. Yeah, imagine that. Okay. So I'm well, give us. 
So I'm going to Go give ahead. us like a, a is a ten minute break or you want a four minute break? We have two choices. Uh, did, uh, did we get six? <laughs> uh, I I have five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes, whatever. How's that? Okay. Okay. I'm going to play this beautiful song. It's called Freedom by Twinkle Schaskel Yoakum. And then another song from her, Heaven is Under Your Feet, and I know you're going to love them. So break time. Thank you. All righty. We are back. And, again, that was Twinkle Chassel Yoakum. First song was Freedom, and the other one was Heaven Under Your Feet. You there, Drake? Oh, absolutely. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> this is much, way too much fun. The, the, the music's excellent. The uh, company's great. And oh, my gosh. We a lot are of people great out company. This, I bet there's people on fire out there wanting to ask questions. <laughs> well, there is somebody that is on fire that wants to say something, Drake. That's okay. There we go. You're live, caller. Grammy J. Yes. Okay, you're you're on with Drake. Thank you, go honey. Go for it, lady. <laughs> Hello, my sweet people. My life has just come full circle, and the Great Spirit knows what that means. And I thank the Great Spirit for using you and everyone else to give T the most beautiful birthday he's ever had on the 4th of July in honor of my sons. This is so huge. God bless our planet. God bless the Great Spirit. And God bless each and every one of you that allowed yourself to be used to bring us to this moment. I've been crying, Brother Drake. Very happy tears. Now I'll shut up now so you can go to your questions. I'm giving you a big hug, Brother Drake. I can feel it. I know you can. I love you with all my heart. And you, Minute Man, Lady Dragon, Denise, Kimberly, all of you, God bless you. Thank you, Grammy. Thank you. Thank Grammy. you. Ain't nothing I can follow that with. You have to go to questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Drake, I, I, I'm I'm not seeing um, I'm not seeing Lady Dragon or Minuteman on the board right now. I'm, I don't know if they just moved down the board or if they both hung up. <laughs> I, I don't. We somehow lost them. Um, if they're out there, have them. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll ask for them to call back in. Yeah. Well, um, they. they they hung up. They're definitely online. And I was oh. actually trying to see if Terry wanted to talk, and I was trying to screen with her, and she didn't talk. So I'm just going to try one more. Maybe she's listening right now, and I'm okay. bringing on yeah, Terry's mic. Yes, she had my... questions from our chat room. Terry, are you there? Yes, I am. Ah, hello. There we go. Hi. Hi. I, I went silent there for a minute. I had to reconnect. Oh, okay. Um, you're on with Drake, and you can bring in questions we have from the chat room. Okay, I'll bring a couple of questions in from the chat room. Um, I wanted to make a little bit of a statement for those of people that aren't on our Facebook page, that don't get these news updates and don't don't really hear what's going on. Um, I I am getting a lot of information out of Europe that is not being reported, and we can't even access in the United States. It's absolutely crazy what's going on over there that we can't access. Um, I've made a new connection tonight. Um, Drake, it's through a friend that we both know, so uh, I wanted to get together with you and discuss it with you, but there's some pretty crazy things going on within Europe, and uh, um, I'm going to be posting it in chat as soon as I get this hooked up after the call. So I wanted to let everybody know that as soon as I get all this stuff confirmed, I'm going to start posting some of this information that I've found out. Um, okay. okay. One question. Uh, one question we've got from the chat. Uh, one of the big questions, Drake, is everybody wants to know if uh, this is a yellow light or a green light. Ladies and gentlemen, this is green light. Really. Really. Okay. Um, 
Okay, another question is, um, during the last interview, it was announced in the chat room by the administrators that there were going to be credible guests added to the broadcast to help substantiate your information. Um, do we need that now? Will those guests be added now, or is this going to all blow up and happen before that's even necessary? We won't have time to do that. I wish we did, but uh, I'm glad we don't. As I said, it's coming sooner than people think, and... Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm waiting for the fireworks. <laughs> okay. They also want to know out of the chat room, um, how is this going to affect other countries around the world? What's the result of this going to be on on them? Well, several several results. Um, what people don't know is that uh, um, there are a load, and I mean a load, a large load, of just about every uh, nation on the planet watching to see what we can do. They feel, and this is from the people and some of the officials, that if we can do it, anybody can. So that's a part of uh, a dream that some of the people who first got involved with the Freedom Projects have had, that the whole world can be set free from these uh, tyrants that seem to think it's fun to play with people's lives. The... Uh, this runs the gamut, and by that I mean the full spectrum, all the way from the small to the big. This runs all the way from uh, the Aborigine in the outback to the capital uh, in Australia, um, England, uh, and the European Union are having extraordinary, and by extraordinary I mean extreme financial duress terrible problems in terms of maintaining life support, which is what they've been on, by the way, in case anybody didn't notice. The decision was made to cut all ties from the United States to any foreign uh, entity in terms of finance, excluding certain nations that have already made agreements with us. The basis of that is that the European Union is on its own. They either sink or swim, according to what they've decided to do. In case anybody has missed it, the European Union was the basis for the design of the globalist takeover. In short, there has been one attempt, which was voted down, and a second attempt coming to take the sovereignty of all the nations, to include their financial uh, sovereignty, and combine it into the European Union, where... Somebody from a foreign country can tell you what to do in terms of uh, taxes, amount of money you get paid, uh, and the freedoms you have. This is uh, the type of rulership that uh, was destined for our nation. As our nation sets itself free, it's going to extricate other nations. We have one major nation to the north, known as Canada, that is vital. The vitality of that nation is going to be tested over the next few weeks, and I mean tested extremely. We have um, another neighbor to our southwest that um, has some extraordinary and extreme problems. Some of the um, oligarchs, and these are rich folks who think they can rule you, primarily, made a decision that we should have the North American Union and that we should come out with a currency called the Amero and that we should have a super highway from Mexico to Canada and a few other things. They didn't ask, but if you want to know where a lot of the transportation money is going that should have been fixing our bridges, patching the holes in the interstate, it's going to this super huge highway. And that is to be terminated. Among other things, the agreement is to be terminated. A lot of the uh, financial agreements, such as free trade, zone, free trade zones and free trade agreements, are to be terminated. You're talking about bringing back manufacturing, farming, industry in general, um, a whole load of jobs. Uh, the things that have been being sold uh, sold off to other countries, outsourced. The companies that have left 
uh, are going to find themselves in a real interesting situation. Um, if they do business here, they're going to be taxed on the whole of their business profits, not just what they do here. None of the monies generated in our country are going to be allowed to move around much. In other words, yeah, you can reinvest, but you may not just take the funds and run. This has been going on for far too long. So that will give you a little update as to what the international situation is and uh, a portion of our role that we're going to play in it. This is a, There's a lot more detail and intricacy involved that I cannot go into uh, in order to preserve some of the things that are in process. Just like yeah, I'm not going to name names after our event. Now, after our event, I'll be able to name names. Okay, I, I got one them. more question. One more question coming from the chat room, and then I'll let okay. you take it to callers because I think that it'll probably be covered with all the callers. Um, one okay. of the biggest questions is uh, there's an event that they're talking about the UN troops that are moving. That there's some order or something's been reported that UN troops are supposed to be moving into Syria um, in the next two days. Um, is is this going to thwart that, or is is um, is that going to still happen? Um, that's an interesting question um, on various levels. Uh, financially, there's been a lot of uh, promises made to the U.N. On troop levels, there's also been a lot of promises made on the support of those the uh, positions that the U.N. has been taking. Um I will suggest that the U.N. is going to have some serious operational problems very shortly due to the fact that they are not operating in the best interests of any nation on the planet um, and are under the authority of the uh, ideology of globalist uh, economies and rulership. So... Um, my understanding was that the UN is to be disbanded or dismantled and reinitiated elsewhere and reinitiated as it was originally supposed to be. Now, what this means is that when a country has a problem, they bring it up at the UN, and somebody who happens to have extra of this or that that will fit that problem can offer it. That was the idea of the UN. This is primarily supposed to have been centered on humanitarian needs. People need water, food, whatever, uh, and somebody's got extra, they send it. No big deal, okay? Uh, this is the ideology of what was intended in the original purposing of the United Nations. The United Nations was taken over by the same people that uh, offer you central banking and uh, corporate control. And due to that fact, they also became a combination of socialist, communist-oriented. Uh, anybody that's curious, look up their charter, look up Agenda 21. It's on their website, and you'll get an idea as to how far that went. So uh, it may be that the situation can change in the next day or two. I don't know yet. Uh, I've not been given specific information on that part of it. However, um, if things change extraordinarily, and they were to lose a certain amount of funding because it ain't the right thing to do, uh, that might change things. Now, it could be, and I'm going to offer this, uh, it could be that uh, there needs to be a settlement of that disagreement down there so that they can quit the slaughter on both sides. And if that's the intent and purpose of this, uh, I don't see that much wrong with it. Um it is no longer acceptable to slaughter people because you disagree with what they what they are, whether that's their color, national origin, or religious beliefs. It don't matter. Now, the religiosity and religion and belief systems will be attended to, as I understand it, uh, in short order. I don't know how shortly. Uh, as we take our action, then supposedly we are supposed to uh, garner assistance from these so-called angels or ETs. And that assistance is to 
uh, give us the true story and full story of who we are, where we came from, and how it really works. Now, right. you know, believe it or not, right. it's up to the individual. You have freedom of will to either accept or reject. Um, believe it or not, as you so choose, is what God says. And I'll run. I'll let everybody run with that uh, to their own personal uh, are we choices. A celebration show on the Fourth of July. I sure. Does I that certainly hope so. On Wednesday. I certainly hope so. <laughs> I would like nothing better than to be singing Kumbaya. <laughs> okay, I'm going to throw it back to Denise now and let her get get callers in. Thank you, Drake. You're welcome. Okay, so at this point. You ready to take some calls, Drake? Oh, yeah. All right, excellent. First up is Gloria, and she's been waiting for a while. So, Gloria, you're live. Hi, thank you. Hi, Drake. I am so proud to be a citizen of this country. You have made me so happy tonight with this information. But I, what, kind of, what I was going to ask is kind of moot now, because, uh, I, but I just want to bring it up. My um, daughter has a couple of friends that are no longer active duty, and he, they were telling her about the FEMA camp. And he, they were saying that they had guillotines there, and they were training people to use them. Yeah, Can you believe they were. That? Yep. I don't, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it at all. But, that's how despicable and low <laughs> people have sick. Listen, these I'm with people you. ain't nice. I know. These, these, I people ain't, these, these people ain't nice in any way, shape, or form, and uh, they're going to be dealt with. Fine. Well, as, my grand, you know, as my grandmother used to say, I'm a, you know, my southern grandmother, she said, be careful what you say and do because it comes back to bite you in the butt. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Well, God bless you, Drake. I am, and all, of the, all, everyone who is standing up for this country and keeping us safe. And I, I adore the military. I had a husband that was in Vietnam as well, and I am so proud of all of you. And I'm so proud of this country. God bless you, and thank you for what you've done. You're welcome. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, Gloria. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Bye. Okay, now we have Tony. Tony, you're live. Thank you very much. Um, Drake, I have two questions for you. The first one is, uh, uh, I guess, depends on how you ask the first one, determine whether, whether I need to ask the second one. But as you said, the majority of the population simply don't care or just don't know any better because they've been asleep and haven't awakened yet to what's going on in the world. Uh, I personally can't help but think that having so many not being made aware of what's going on or about to happen poses the risk of panic, uh, especially when the poop hits the fan, excuse me, French. So my question is, why isn't the military trying to bring these people into the loop, either mainstream media or alternative media, because I'm sure that's not something impossible for the military to do. And I'm sure if they've, if they've let someone like Alex Jones in on it, uh, and then, you know, they've told you to tell the few hundreds that are on the line on this call today to know about it. It doesn't make any... Why would they not want the, the general population to know so that when they start seeing these things happening, they don't start panicking? Well, um, my suggestion is that they do want them to know. Um one of the reasons they picked me to put this information out is because of the uh, extraordinary amount of uh, freedom people who are armed and militias who are armed and the fact that they want to handle this themselves. They've taken personal affronts or uh, slaps in the face by um, a whole load of these people that think they're in charge of something. Uh, and better than them, and for no good reason other than they want to uh, degrade the military in the eye of the people. They would also like to have the people fearful of the military. And ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing to be feared. They have committed, they have won their battles, and 
they're now not only on our side, but they told me to tell you that the cavalry is coming. And the thing to do is to sit back and watch the fireworks. That means don't freak out. Don't worry about carrying your gun. Just, you know, keep your eye to the sky and watch the fireworks. I guess they're going to do it all over the planet or something here on <laughs> whether it's 4th of July or when exactly. I'm not sure. They didn't say that part. But uh, the people that I got this uh, from are some of the high, highest ranking people in the country. Some of the information I got was uh, from people who are extraordinarily high ranking in other countries. In other words, I did a little loopy loop and did a double check to be sure that this was going to happen. I knew about this about three, four days ago that the probability was there, and I kept checking and pushing. And um, the uh, information was routed to me by a, a um, very reliable, validated source and three people that I also know. And I'm willing to accept their uh, statement that they're going to uh, ride to the rescue, so to speak. As far as people panicking, there ain't nothing to worry about, folks. They have heard our voice, and they don't want us to get in the way of professionalism. And uh, your average person does not know the professionalism required of a person in the military acting in this capacity. This is one of the few times this has happened, and yet a majority of the uh, what you would call ground-level commanders are familiar with what it takes to bring us off most peacefully without any interruption. So that's something to bear in mind. In other words, the light ought to work, phones, uh, you know, you can flush the toilet, don't worry about it. And that's basically what I was told. Does that answer both questions? Uh, uh, well, unfortunately, no, because I'm still waiting to know. I mean, I'm, am I missing something? Uh, your message about not panicking is great, and I'm all for that, but that only goes out to a few hundred people on this call today. What about, which doesn't even make a, you know, a drop in the bucket of the, as far as the overall population. What about the other millions of people who don't know what was going on? Well, how I just got know, one how question. Know? I got Pardon? a question for you. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with thing, a thing called tactics and logistics. Tactics are the uh, physical operation in terms of uh, designated uh, objective, whether that's alleviating a flood problem, a bridge breaking, or whatever it might be. Logistics entails all of the stuff it takes to cause that or allow that to be available. Now, I'm going to give the military the credit uh, that they will go mainstream immediately. But I'm going to suggest that there may be some action, and I don't know what that will be, uh, before they go fully mainstream with this. And I know they're listening to this call, um, <laughs> which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, I had a call from a friend uh, who's part of this uh, ec exercise, and um, I was told that uh, they, pay, they pay pretty close attention to the information so that they know that they've put it out correctly and that it's being put out correctly. Now, the other part of that is that if... They're willing to take their time and listen to a um, program such as this on the Internet. Uh, I will give them the credit for knowing when to go on to mainstream media. If they okay, wish. So you feel basically they're basically they are going to do it. Yes. Now, okay. my suggestion is not only are they going to do it, but they're going to pick people that are known. I'm one voice that's known. Alex Jones is another. Rush Limbaugh is a third. Uh, there's a whole loop. There's a whole group of us who can out this. Now, I'm going to tell you, I will tell you this much. Um, several people, including the ones that I've mentioned by name, know all about this. What they wanted to do was first make sure, number one, 
that the freedom community as much as can be reached in terms of what we've got going on in our area uh, was reached, as well as as many militia as possible, as many of the armed groups, so that they know that they're not required to do anything until they are contacted to take some sort of action. You'd be able to recognize the American troops. This I guarantee. They won't look foreign to you in any way, shape, or form. They might be Japanese or Chinese in origin. It'd be more in an American uniform, not a UN uniform, Chinese uniform, or something of that nature. So when uh, a staff car pulls up and says, hey, I need to talk to you, find out what they want. And then if they request assistance, do everything you can to, to meet that request. Uh, if you need extra personnel, uh, you can advise Rick Light, who will either uh, have the personnel available, or uh, I can advise certain people, and we can have uh, quite a few hundred show up at any designated location in the country as needed. Um, so uh, I'm going to give the military the credit to know that they have to go public with this so that the sleeping majority gets the message. Okay. okay. Now that I heard from you, now that I heard from you that they are willing to handpick a few key people to let the public know, that then I'm satisfied, and, and my second question is satisfied. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We got another caller. Okay. Excuse me, Drake. We had one other question uh, from the chat room. Um, okay. And it came from InLight Radio. Uh, it was a question from Cosmic Vision News. Uh, it says, is there anything Drake can say about Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper and what the status may be of the Canadian government? Will they peacefully resign, or is it looking like they, too, will have to be arrested? Um, that's a question that's going to have to be answered on that side of the border to an extent. Now, one of the things that is interconnected with the United States is the central banking system on the North American continent, to include Mexico. These are going to be closed, period. The central banking system are the ones that run things. They're owned by the people that run us. They also are run by the same people that own the big corporations. So it solves a whole bunch of evils in uh, one operation in that sense. Now, as far as the Canadian government goes, uh, I would uh, respectfully suggest that they need to have a friggin' meeting, ASAP, make their decision as to whether they're going to fight against the people or not, and whether or not they want uh, some 200 nations uh, paying them a visit to rectify problems. And that's basically what you're, what's being offered uh, to everybody. So... <laughs> Uh, personally, I would suggest that uh, they write things immediately um, as much as they can. Um, public announcements would be in order, as well as here in the United States. And that should answer that question. Okay. okay. Listen, Drake, since I'm – this is Kimberly. Since I'm screening yeah. calls, I am not able to hear every word. So I'm okay. seeing things in the chat room. I know the question was asked, is this green light? And I didn't hear the answer to that because people are kind of confused and I'm confused. So where are we? Green light it is. has been okay. issued by the United States military to me via okay. channels of communication. Okay. I have not posted this yet because I was requested not to until after this program. Okay. All right. The green light will be on my uh, web page, and it will be uh, notified to everybody I have contact with. Okay. All right, because I missed that. Like, I missed that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but I'm seeing it in the chat room, so I just needed to confirm it. So thank you very much. All right. wee -hoo. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see. We just had Tony, so I, th I think that was Tony. Alan, Hello. Hello. This is Kimberly. Do you have a question for Drake? Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, I don't know if Drake wants to answer this or not. Um, I'll leave it up to his own discretion. How is that? That's cool. Okay. 
email regarding, I'll give you a little bit of the body of it, and then I'll hit you with the question and say your name. How? The email was directed to uh, Lord Freedom. I direct question. Hey, you're breaking up so bad I can't understand you. It's better? I don't know. Try talking and see. Okay. Um, in the email body itself, I, I spoke about the Trinity, the Virginia Land Company, uh, Habernati, the Constitution, the Black Pope, Admiral Mullins, and a few others. And yes, the question is, is uh, you're breaking up again. Okay. Uh, what what part you miss? The whole question. <laughs> the whole question, uh, oh. sir. We're, uh, we're we're afraid we're not going to be able to answer your question. Um, it, can can we uh, try uh, having you call back in? Well, I'm going to step outside. I was in the house, so this uh. might be better since I'm on a cell phone. And if it doesn't yeah, work, it's on better. Okay. You do sound better. <laughs> okay. All right. Within the email, um, like like I repeated, I went through the Black Post, Admiral Mullins, historical contracts, along with the military and honor. Now, I know our military does honor international treaties and various histories of treaties. So the controversial question I have is, since our Constitution it's mainly a contract between Great Britain and the Vatican through international treaty. Will the U.S. military redraft it, enumerate all the rights that should be given to the American people, and sign in international waters? Uh, basically, uh, that won't be necessary, and I'll explain why. The qualification to set our nation free has been issued through a notification process. This notification process contains uh, specific dealings within our country only. Within the paperwork that has been submitted as notification, we break and cut all ties, all known ties, all treaties, all agreements and anything that is contrary to the constitutionality within the states themselves, which includes the Articles of Confederation, the Bill of Rights, and we resurrected a little document that's uh, pretty cool called the Declaration of Independence. Declaration. Yes. And in our notification process, uh, this was a notification to the world. The manner in which it was uh, formulated and um, the pre procedures followed gave the military, the civilian authority, to take the action that they now have uh, intimated to me they are getting ready to take. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen tonight, tomorrow morning. I don't know how soon. They said very soon. So okay. you can expect right. nullification can... of anything. Well, hold on a second. You can expect nullification and voiding of any agreement that is contrary to the uh, betterment of the people of the United States, period. That excludes any and all right, foreign right, powers, right. agreements, etc. So that's basically right. the uh, ideology behind our paperwork that was that has been uh, used in notification process. Okay, that's 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 fine, Drake. You answer all the other questions that pertain to that too, because I was a little worried that they didn't bypass and usurp all that by the nation state um, legal proceeding and the writing that would have been sent to the Hague. That's why I exactly. asked it. Because a lot of a lot of people does not understand the fact of what the Constitution really means. And if it's left the same, it leaves the back door completely open for the far future. That's exactly. why I asked. Exactly. So, We've just landed on a Thank you. But well, anyways, thank you very much, Drake. I just wanted to make sure that that door was covered, and I didn't want because with all the excitement that everybody has, I didn't want that to be overlooked. 
That's why I brought it to your attention. So you take care. I'm going to hang up, and I'll listen to the rest of the show on, on the Internet. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Drake, uh, this is Denise again. Um, we have uh, in the chat room uh, several people are keep asking, is the TSA going to go away right away? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> yesterday would wouldn't have been soon enough for me. Uh, the Transportation and Safety Administration does have some good quality. Um, <laughs> and that does not include the gropers at the airport. Um, most countries, and <laughs> you'd be surprised, <laughs> you go into some of these nations that are supposed to be uh, military controlled, and it's freer than we are. Now, right. you know, <laughs> here we are supposed to be the bastion of freedom, and uh, we need a proctologist to go through the through the uh, lines at the airport. Um, I think that's obtuse, and uh, it was a part of the control measures uh, put in place by the oligarchs that wanted to rule us. This is where they got the idea that they could do anything, and they're getting ready to find out that not that is not not only the, uh, the fact of the matter, but uh, they're going to have to deal with uh, some 300 million people who are pissed. Yeah. Um, Drake, there's also uh, somebody in the chat, uh, the Globe, uh, the uh, uh, Blog Talk chat, um, who says he's with Oath Keepers and says you have his number. <laughs> I do. Uh, and uh, he he's afraid to go forward with anything until he hears from you, um, you know, as far as posting anything. So he just wanted you to know that he's out there, and, and if you can, contact him after the show. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Um, all okay. right. Do we have other questions there, Kimberly? Oh, we have more questions than, than we are going to get to, so we're doing our Obviously. best. <laughs> All right. At this point, we have Buck. Hello, Buck. Are you there? I'm here. Hello, Buck. Much love to you. Can you hear me? Go for it. Yes, yes we hear can. me, Drake? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Um, I have some questions, but I, I'll try to make these quick, and you and you can answer them quickly if you'd like. Uh, should okay. we have any problems traveling around by car uh, over the next week or so? Are we going to have any issues? Should we be listening to the radio, the TV, anything along those lines that we need to keep in mind? Um, I'd listen to the traffic stations um, simply because there may be a couple of bottlenecks where they need to close something up in order to catch some of the crooks. Um, other than that, you're not going to have roadblocks or any, any other problems that I'm aware of, according to what I've been told. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, another question is the federal district courts um, – um, you know, those they all fall under the executive branch, which is a, basically a violation of separation of, of uh, uh, powers. Uh, are they going to close pretty quick? The um, I'm going to answer that in a, a little bit of convoluted manner. All of the things that are contrary to the best interests of the people are going to be attended to. Now, whether that is a re configuration in terms of a redesignation of a court status or standing or position or the removal of, of judges or whatever it takes, okay? And this is not limited except to our freedom. And people need to understand that there are going to be some extraordinary changes. And there's going to be a lot of people that are uh, not that have not been adjudicated under the premise of the basis of common law. Uh, if you didn't damage property or hurt somebody, uh, there's no crime, basically, uh, in ideology. Um, the morality will be the golden rule. My rights end where your nose begins. Uh, the idea that people can work things out is going to be tested and tested thoroughly. Now, the other part of this is that we are going to have to go through some legislative uh, hoops. And by that I mean... Um, the uh, rights of everybody are considered the rights of all. In other words, uh, women should not worry about their right to vote. That's not going to be touched. It's going to remain the same. Uh, <laughs> if anybody's dealt with a woman and doesn't realize that they're, uh, some women are a lot better than most men I know, uh, <laughs> and um, that they are uh, 
just as much in every part uh, equal to any man I know, um, then they missed a the boat. And this is explained biblically in terms of the partnership, the absolute partnership. And this is full and complete partnership. Um, and it is not, it is not uh, patriarchal in nature. It is matriarchal, meaning that women used to be in charge, and men need to get over that. Uh, they also, they also, in all our dealings, need to realize the. Um, fact that governments start wars, not people. And I'll give you a good example. In the Middle East, they're still trading beans and um, whatnot across arbitrary borders or lines drawn in the sand, irrespective as to whether or not uh, some idiot uh, says, no, you can't do that. They're doing it anyway. They've been doing it for longer than the governments that started all this have existed. All of this is going to be settled specifically within our country, equality. And I mean that. I'm not playing games with this. Um, the uh, differences that are getting ready to come about are going to be a, a, a pretty much mind wash from what everybody knows. In short, uh, the legalities are going to be changed. And I mean wholesale. And I mean uh, to their basis. The idea of finance in general is going to take an extraordinary uh, set of changes as well to the point where uh, eventually we may not meet, need money. I want you to consider that. Um, however, uh, in order to not give people a shock problem, uh, things are going to basically stay the way they are for a temporary period. As things are uh, addressed in, at varying levels, you're going to see changes, and these are going to be uh, extreme changes. Uh, a majority of the uh, problems reside in the uh, about face in terms of uh, the standing of an individual. Uh, this has been the primary problem, where an individual's rights are not concerned with the majority rules or mob rules, and the uh, reinstatement of individual rights will make the difference and differences people have been looking for for so long. In other words, you're not going to have the Gestapo police or the Gest or the uh, racist that. This stuff's got to quit, period. Uh, anybody who's been in a foxhole don't care what color the guy is next to him as long as he's shooting back at the enemy, too. A uh, person who uh, goes through uh, extraordinary trauma finds that uh, people they've never heard of in their whole life before come to their aid. I mean, there's been videos of people caught under cars. They picked a, a group of people who run over, grab the car, pick it up off of them, and get them out of there. Uh, people uh, go into burning buildings and rescue people. Uh, seemingly heroic acts that, well, I hope somebody do it for me, was the response from this, quote, hero. So... Uh, Attending to the needs of thy brother and sister is going to become the norm. This is the only way that this uh, planet and our society can survive. And that's the answer to just about every question I can give you. And well, I, so one question I did have, though, was the uh, people that have IRS issues. There's, there's ten, tens of thousands of people in prison over IRS issues. Will they be able to get out in a pretty Absolutely, quick Absolutely, and the IRS is going. I knew that. I knew they were going, and I just well, if the I mean, IRS is going, all this stuff. Get out of prison. Well, <laughs> you got to think about this. If the IRS was fraudulent in its basis, that means that all of the stuff that's been done to anybody over in terms of that also goes. So yeah, the, the, we're going to clean the jail out a lot. I mean, um, I think it's uh, kind of extraordinary that something like this hasn't come along sooner. But <laughs> I think that. And things had to be done in a specific order of manner for situations, but there was not a um, capability of somebody coming in and causing problems, and that's basically what's going on. Now you're Is there going to be a, a hotline, Drake, that where, I mean, like I want to work in my county. We've got a, we've got a real problem county, and, and I need to have knowledge, wisdom, uh, leadership from people, as to, and I want to be involved. Uh, is there going to be a hotline where we can call 
on, uh, to help us to clean up our counties? Um, there's going to be a website that I'm going to put on mine. Um, I consider the guy pretty much um, right on in terms of, of what is called community. Uh, community base means that you run a small group of people into another group of people into a bigger group of people and take over a county or a state or a country. Uh, basically, what we've got going on is called freedom. And uh, uh, the answers are to address the situations that are untenable. Uh, most people may not know what that word means, but something that you can't handle anymore, you can't put up with. Um, and it's kind of like a dog that wants to bite you on the butt. Uh, if you stand and try to fight, uh, you, you get your butt kicked. If you turn and run, they bite you on the butt. Um, so these, quote, agencies and problems of that sort are gone. That's a part of the agreement. Good. Good. All right. Well, I look forward to that uh, uh, website. We have Miniman yes. live. If he had any suggestion on that for the gentleman also. Uh, yeah. That'd be great. Minute man, you're you're on. Um, if you could help that man with that question. What was the question again? Okay. Well, in our counties, um, Minute man, we we have issues with sheriffs, with uh, the whole judicial system. They've been part and parcel uh, buddies of the of the the banks, and we need to clean house. I mean, we need to get some people in here we can trust. And I and and I've I've actually I know some guys in the militia, but I don't know anybody. You know, right in my county, I know some other people in Georgia. Would the militia be uh, available to help us and give us leadership in those areas? Well, I sure hope that they'll stand and, and be counted if that's the case with your local area. Here again, I want to uh, remind everybody what Drake said, that we basically, or I'm going to encourage the majority of the militias to basically wait to be contacted. And we're going to let those people do their thing. And when it gets time for us to clean our local house up, of course, we will be addressing those issues from straight to state to state. Okay. But it'll be a coordinated effort. What's your What's your email site? Pardon? You have a website or, or an email? Yes, I do. You can contact um, me at uh, the Well-Regulated American Militias. That's uh, WRAMsite.com. W-R-A-M? Yes. Site.com. Yes, uh, W-R-A-M-S-I-T-E dot com. Very good. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for your question, sir. Okay, Kimberly, do we have another question? Uh, shall I bring uh, Jack on? Hi, it's Kimberly. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, uh, good. Yes, bring Jack on because my computer just crashed and I'm rebooting. <laughs> So, great. I'm glad you can still hear me. <laughs> so, yes, Jack is next. Thank you. <clears throat> Are we bringing Jack on? Well, Denise needs to do it because yeah, I... Sorry, I had it on. Sorry. Uh, Drake, uh, thank you for doing everything, and I want to thank the military. Without the military, I don't think we could have probably pulled this off. My question is, is the uh, uh, a couple weeks ago you said about the packages mailing out. Do you know where they're at at this point? Are they in somewhere? What packages are you talking about? About the PP program. Oh, you're talking about the prosperity packages. Um, that is uh, something that's been a little bit of a, uh, an aloof problem for me to research. Uh, I found out that uh, people are being notified. Uh, some people have actually gotten money, and uh, basically, that's as far as I know about it. Now, whether this is a product of um, repayment to an individual for uh, things that have gone on in the past, I don't know. From my, yeah. what I understand, that's supposed to be the idea of the of the deal itself. I've I also know. heard. I've also heard that uh, you're supposed to be a member of certain groups or something before that uh, can take place. So there's a lot of ifs. 
Okay. My next question is, what happens to the Queen of England in that situation? <laughs> um, well, personally, I don't much care. Uh, to be honest with you, um, we are uh, in a position where we have cut ties with all of the foreign entities. This is something I addressed earlier. But uh, the Queen of England, um, the, the uh, House of London, and um, a few other places that are known to harbor uh, problems are going to be eliminated. There, some of that is in process now that... Uh, it's difficult to get the news on out of um, Europe. Uh, I'm going to check some contacts and see whether or not we can't get a free flow of information on that. Uh, presently, Europe is in serious trouble, uh, yeah. both financially and politically. So what you're going to have is uh, people wanting their freedom and to be able to sell and buy and sell tomatoes when they feel like it instead of being told what to do. Um, the idea of full control of a uh, uh, country uh, by someone that don't even live there to me is uh, a bit much and this is what the European Union has been going about doing um, so therefore as their central banking system fails then they're going to have to go back there to their original currencies which is going to uh, bring about a whole load of exchange rates again for a short period of time now some of these things will be um, able to be revalued through projects on a humanitarian basis. In other words, you need a bridge or you need a road fixed or things of that nature will create income, etc. It goes in right into the economy because you only hire locals. This is going to be true in uh, almost every nation on the planet in the very near future. And that should basically cover that, I hope. It, that, that situation has been some crimes on America, too. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that should go with the second question. The next question I has: What about the, what about the uh, Vatican Bank? And, and uh, do you know anything about? Um. Yeah. Uh, it's got some serious financial problems right now. Um. One is that it's been cut off to an extent. Um. That was the what was called the Northern Connection, and the Northern Connection has been severed. Um, whether or not uh, um, everything is attended to immediately is questionable. I do not know what exactly the itinerary will be of the military backing, but my understanding of the plan is that they will attend to our freedom first, uh, cutting any and all agreements with anybody else, at least temporarily, until something can be re-initiated uh, or reworked. Uh, anything that's adverse to the interests of the United States or the people uh, will be done away with. So there's a, you know, that's sort of a multiple choice kind of a, uh, an answer, and that's the best you'll get at this point. I appreciate it. Next question I had was, uh, what about the Federal Reserve? Where we stand on that one? It goes. It goes completely out? Yep. Oh, great. The next question is, uh, the military ought to go up to UN. Hello? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Go, uh, you need to repeat that. Uh, I'd like to see the military go up to UN and give them 24 hours to leave. I heard they were going to put bulldozers up to it and see if they could float it in the ocean. That needs to go. <laughs> exactly, it is intended to go. Well, Jack, we thank you for your questions, but we have a lot of callers waiting to ask uh, questions, it. and we appreciate I your... Appreciate it. Thank you very thank much, Jerry. You so You're thank welcome. You, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, Drake, um, we, we have a couple other um, questions coming from the chat room, just a couple of them. Uh, I thought I would address a few of those. Um, uh, people are asking about... Um, uh, when the ETs might uh, uh, make an appearance? Um, <clears throat> I've been given some um, confirmation on that and um, was told to hold my water uh, that they would handle that uh, uh, very lightly at first, more heavily later, 
uh, etc. And they did not give a. They gave us. They gave me a specific time, but uh, they asked me not to put it out yet. So okay. everybody's going to have to kind of uh, sit around and wait on that one. Okay. I see if, if the chat would stop scrolling quite so quickly. <laughs> okay. Let's Good see. luck. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. What about um, uh, your take on the, you, you know, you've been telling everybody be prepared, stock up on toilet paper, water, um, those kinds of things. Um, um, or should we just go out now and buy beer and popcorn and sit back and watch the movie? <laughs> that's a that's a pretty um, interesting question. Now, um, uh, from what I understand, things are not going to be interrupted any more than um, absolutely is necessary to complete the project of cleaning things up. Uh, I would not necessarily um, give the military all the credit in the world for being able to uh, correctly supply people. The reason I don't is that I got to eat Korean era sea rations in Vietnam. Uh, the fruit was fermented, which was pretty nice. Uh, I did give them that, but some of the food was rather, um, ooh, uh, I won't go there. But um, I would suggest that people have a little extra th of things. Uh, make sure you got a week's supply. Make sure you got a month's supply of uh, toilet paper, of basic stuff that you're going to miss if you don't have it. Uh, your meds, make sure that you've got those uh, in stock or on hand. Make sure that you've got uh, some vitamins, uh, you know, whatever it is that you use most uh, often on a daily basis you don't pay a lot of attention to. Toothpaste. Uh, right. Go get an extra tooth. Pretty much like, like what the average person does like we do here in the in the south for hurricane season. You stock up on all that stuff. And the people up north for the winter in case they're snowed in, et cetera, et cetera, um, you know, th they stock up that way. C yeah, we get hurricanes up north too, though, on the, on oh, the coast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, great, great. Um, okay, Drake, let's see. Um, uh, Hold on a minute. Uh, okay. We got one more thing. Um, I'm going to make a suggestion, and I hope this don't cause too many problems, but it's a realistic suggestion, and that is take two weeks' worth of uh, money out of the out of your bank account for the basic necessities you might need, fill your gas tank, uh, et cetera, and know that you're liable to have um, hits and misses in terms of deliveries. This is why the toilet paper, toothpaste, and et cetera. But now if uh, a central bank closes and your bank has, happens to be uh, affiliated, it may be a few days, it could be a week, it could be nothing at all. You don't know. Therefore, it's best to take, like I say, a week or two supply of money, just incidental type money. Uh, you know, you're going to have to buy a certain amount of food. Um, you may not get really fresh food. You may end up uh, having a problem with that right at first uh, in some places. In some places, there won't be any problem at all. But um, just, uh, you know, be advised. I would suggest a, a week or so of supply of money if possible. Cash your check, right, don't and, deposit. And, and non-perishable foods. Yeah, yeah, canned yeah. goods, things of that nature. Yeah. Okay, oh. great, Drake. And one one other thing from the chat room was that <laughs> people are already celebrating, I think. Um, um, uh, do you think there will be a hold on the Olympics? <laughs> uh, now, to be honest with you, I don't know. Um, it depends on several things. It depends on whether or not people have the capability to um, travel, uh, financially be able to do the things that are associated with the Olympics. There's an extraordinary amount of uh, international exchange in terms of uh, funds that goes on with all people coming from all over the globe. Um, right. So there could be an issue, some issue with that. Um, there could be some issue with people not being able to make it there because the airline was owned by a central bank and shut down. Um, if you can think of something that can go wrong, talk to Murphy. Uh, if we can catch him, let me know. I want a piece of his action. Um, other than that, you know, take a guess. Uh, it's an interesting question. Okay, and I don't, uh, Kimberly, I don't know if we have another caller, but one other quick question from the chat um, uh, was... Uh, uh, do you have a late, uh, uh, a recent update since last our, your last call with Neil Keenan? 
Uh, yes, I have, and I'm not allowed to put that information out yet until Neil gives me the uh, go-ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. Hopefully that will be sometime this week. Um, as I get information, uh, it may become public about the same time that I get it. Okay, so. and I thought you should also know, Trick, that Operation Greenlight is all over the web. <laughs> Good. It's all over the web already. I mean, it's, it's, the people are sending me links. Drake says green light, green light. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. one of the things the military wanted me to wait on, and uh, you know, pop some popcorn, have a beer, and enjoy. I mean, they said uh-huh. there was going to be. A, they said sit Those back and watch the fireworks. On now. The radio went ahead and blasted it on their pages. <laughs> so. Well, I'm waiting on the fireworks. I'm, I keep looking out my window and I ain't seen any yet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I just thought you should know. All right, Thank you. Uh, Kimberly, do we have other quest- other, other oh, callers? Yeah, well, we uh, we have more questions than we are going to get to. But my question is, Drake, do you want to? Do you need a break? I get to stand a break if we got a uh, you know a song or something. Yeah, we do. So, um, uh, you want four minutes or you want six minutes? <laughs> uh, let's do the shorty because we got a lot of callers. Okay. So we're going to take a four-minute break. The name of the song is Be the Change by a wonderful artist. Her name is Heather Fraun. She's from Australia. Heather, F-A-R-H-N dot com is her website, and this is a beautiful song. So enjoy, and we'll be back. And we have a couple callers in the queue. Thank you. I often share those words, Be the Change, um, Mahatma Gandhi is the one who is giving credit for that phrase. Drake, are you there? Absolutely. All right, excellent. And at this point, we have, hold on a second, we have Roy, who's been waiting patiently. Roy, you are now live. What would you like to ask Drake? Hello, Drake. Hello. Uh, this is Roy here in Indiana, and I've uh, been listening to the call. And first off, I want to take my uh, my hat off to the military uh, for what they're doing. And then the rest of you people that's on this call, you, Minuteman, uh, Denise, others that are here and put this together. And... Uh, I've listened to a lot of people on the Internet for years and talked with uh, a number of people. Take a headset to bed, and I listen to stuff around the clock. And here on this program, I'm listening to a lot of pieces of this world puzzle getting put together, but the bad parts ain't being included. Thank you, and that's all I've got. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now we have Jeff. Hold on, Jeff. I'm pushing the button. Hi there. Hey, Jeff. Are you there? Yes, I am. Excellent. This is such a great day, and I've been on your side. I talk to naysayers, and I tell you guys, just wait. Watch and wait, because it's going to come out. This guy, Drake, he's for real. And he means what he does. So, Thank you. Thank you, everyone on this program, for making this come about, for giving keeping us up to date, but pushing it forward the way you have. Thank you. And uh big booyah to the military just for their incredible uh, stand on this whole issue and to, to make it peaceful. That's the most incredible thing. Um I would like to make a thing, tell you a thing that I heard over the weekend, and it was by someone, actually my nephew, but it was about his sister who came in from California, and was uh, the plane was uh, told to land in Las Vegas, and he told me through her that and so they they have no idea of this cabal and what's going on and the rest mass arrest. They have no idea. So, But here's what they told me. They said, Uncle Jeff, they, she told me that they had they couldn't go to uh, Denver to land to make her transfer, get back to Wisconsin. And, and the reason why was that there was a whole bunch of military there 
they're arresting like 200 people in Denver. So that was somewhere as Friday or Saturday, I guess. But uh, shortly after you said your letter went out, and, uh, you know, within a week after you said your letter went out, as I was following you, I think, correctly. So I just want to tell you that. I don't know if you have knowledge of that, but this is a complete hit in the side of the head. Wow. Hallelujah. This is great. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like, I, I don't know if you, you have children or have been there when they've been born, but it's a wonderful, glorious time to be able to experience that and I, I feel the same way right now in that this is this is like freedom, this is birth of a nation and uh, it just brings me to my knees, it's just so incredible so I thank you guys thank the military, I'd love to give a hug and a kiss to Lady Dragon and uh, you know and shake your hand of course and meet you sometime and I have also been uh reading up on this group that you were trying to so softly bring to the mindset of people who have remained ignorant, not because they want to be, but because they've been programmed for their whole life to be ignorant of things outside of their so-called realm. And uh, I want to, so this, I would love to be put in contact with this group, this Pleiadians. And what they're doing is incredible for us. So, but it could only happen if our military would take charge. So, yeah. well, um, you're going you're gonna to find that there's uh, um, a lot of um, people that are going to be wanting to. Um, Be involved with uh, things on a level that they're not yet ready to handle. You're going to find a um, um, problem in terms of being at the level that these entities are. And that problem is to, supposed to be addressed by um, um, schooling us in what we can uh, uh Uh, what our capabilities are going to be, what our limitations are, what we can be, uh, uh, what we can best be uh, as individuals as well as spiritual beings. So you have to understand that you're going to have to go to school. Uh, I've been in school for about um, a month or so just learning how to talk. Uh, their communication, their idea of communication uh, is in, is a combination of intuitiveness and um, uh, also involves uh, imagery. It's a different uh, form of ling of language altogether. So um, it's not something that uh, um, is going to be easy to uh, assimilate. It's not going to be something that's you know. Uh, simple. So, this is something that uh, everybody needs to uh, uh, be aware of. And they need to, you need, you need to be able to understand that not everybody is going to be accepting of this. They're not, not uh, they're, some of this is beyond what they're able to get their head around. This is why ET or the angels, whatever you want to call them, are uh, taking their time in terms of contacting us. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, Drake, um, before we go to the next caller, um, um, there were just a couple quick, there was a, a quick statement and a quick question um, from the um, chat room again. Um, one of them was that they just, uh, they're getting reports that, um, there is an unusual number of flights leaving Dover Airport right now. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and, and, and they thought it was really funny. The Queen was wearing green today. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everyone Boy. would get a chuckle on that one. Um, <laughs> um, and let's see. Um, 
let's see, there was one other one, um, one minute, one moment, you, uh, the questions fly by so quick you go cross-eyed, uh, okay, let's see. i got a question for you in the middle of this, uh, oh, okay. I signed up for the, uh, chat room. Yes, sir. Okay, and I'd like to know how I get, uh, get in there, um, do I got to go through, uh, the forum? Yeah, you have to go to the forum and sign up through the forum, um, and then I already go signed through. up. Okay, they want me to check in. There we go. I get it. <laughs> go ahead with go ahead with the questions. I just okay. you know. Uh yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. There was one other one. Um. Okay. Well, I think that no, I think that was it. I think that was it for right now. Okay. In terms of questions. Uh yeah. In terms of questions. Um. Let me see, uh, Kimberly. Are you still with us? Do we do we have another caller on hold? I think we have Buck on the line. Let me see if Buck's ready to come on. Okay. Hey, Buck. Um, did you have a question for Drake? Well, hon, I was on earlier. I don't want to take someone else's spot. Okay. All right. If you did have okay. a question, I'm sorry, you guys couldn't hear me. So the next person up is Chaz. I'm going to bring oh, Chaz. Chaz on. Thank you, Buck. Jazz, are you there? Yes, I am. Excellent. Here. You're on. Hi, Drake. How's it going? My name's Chaz. I'm in Michigan. I've been watching uh, reports about, you know, military action, military training police in Denver, how to drive tanks down the street, and paying attention to that, I... Noticed two days ago, the Oakland County Sheriff's, the county I live in, has a brand new Hummer assault vehicle pulling diesel portable generators. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think about that. There was no markings on the vehicle except for his sheriff driver's li- I mean, license plate on the back. It was all well, black. What I would suggest is that you look at this as public transportation. Um, <laughs> What they're dealing with is public property. Doesn't belong to them. Um, what you must understand is that the um, situation is that these things will be reverted back to the to public use. In other words, those generators could probably be used for pumping water out west where the forest fires are. There is uh, um, extraordinary needs different places. Uh, a Hummer can go places other th- other vehicles can't. Um, right. Rough terrain, uh, swamps, uh, things of this nature. Uh, wherever there's a problem that needs to be attended to, I'd suggest that we need to concentrate these things uh, um, in those areas. Uh, I'm surprised, and I'll be quite honestly, uh, quite open, honestly, uh, you know, surprised that uh, we don't have um, uh, the capability of running uh, something the size of a B-52 or a. a C-130 Super Stratus or something full of water and putting those fires out. Uh, my understanding right. was that was a terrorist attack. So, you know, I mean, you know, let's, you know, let's attend to, let's attend to it. You know, show me. Um, I know that they're probably real busy. If you need the uh, militia to take over your duty so you can fly the airplanes, don't worry, just ask. We'll be right there. <laughs> and that's the way I'm looking right. at it, but. You know, yeah, well, you know, everybody's toys. He was just driving two miles underneath the speed limit all through the well, years. <laughs> Showing off his new Hummer. Well, um, you know, that's cool. Um, <laughs> maybe it'll maybe it'll be something that can rescue someone. Um, uh, I know Michigan is not exactly the uh, kindest uh, topography on the planet, and... Uh, yeah. He, that may be something that could be of uh, good use up there. I don't know. Yeah, it was it was confusing until today, and now I'm hopeful that they're uh, going to be used appropriately, as far as my opinion goes. And that was it. I was just curious. The military, you know, because Alex Jones has been reporting on the military action and his view of all of this military training the police is, you know, not in line with what your conversation is. It's all about getting us in order and getting us used to paying attention to what the military tells us to do and that kind of thing. Well, what you have to understand is there are a lot. There is a lot of fear porn 
that's used to uh, generate audiences. Um, Alex Jones is known for uh, outing things and, uh, uh, oh, my goodness, look at this, and ooh, what do you think about that, and whoop did he do Now, I know for a fact he's been informed, and uh, I leave it to him. I leave it to uh, Rush Limbaugh and these other people to go ahead and, uh, you know, show me. Uh, if they allow me to go public, and it's public now, then uh, I don't see any reason uh, that they can't do it, too. If they need uh, information, if they uh, have my permission to contact me, it's not a problem. They both have my email address. I know that. Um, so, you know, I think we're, I think we're in good shape, guys. I really do. Well, what you're saying sounds encouraging as far as Alex is concerned. He's got, like, you know, 15 years invested in it ain't going to turn out right. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to give up that investment once you're, you know, your whole life is defined by it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Great work. You're welcome. We got another caller? Come on, guys. Okay, Drake, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we're trying to get the caller in. Her name is Colleen. Uh, okay. Okay, Colleen, you're 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 with us. Well, this is wonderful, wonderful news, Drake, and thank you so much. I've been following you since your first address to the military. So um, thank you so much for all your efforts. This is a great day. <clears throat> okay, that aside, I'm here with two friends, and two of us have lost our really, really nice homes to foreclosure. And the third one is in a, a BK situation. And so I'm sure this would be applicable to most listeners, and I don't want you to have you repeating yourself, but can you give us a like current update on those situations after these changes happen? Um, I'm supposed to be updated in the next day or so by uh, Neil Keenan as to some of the financial uh, issues. Um, I've also got uh, a couple of um, what you would consider uh, world-class uh, financiers that are supposed to contact me uh, through uh, by way of Neil, uh, who will be able to explain a whole lot of this stuff a whole lot better than I can to me so that I can relay the information correctly. Uh, I'm going to request that uh, first we have a conversation to, so that they can give me a, get me up to speed, and then secondly so that uh, I would uh, request an email so that I can uh, post, have it posted or at least an article that explains the situation. Now, We've got people that uh, have been uh, foreclosed on, uh, properties that's been foreclosed on more than once. Um, we've got uh, a variety of different people buying these things. So it's all kind of iffy right at this point. Now, uh, with the military, uh, uh, their action, we have a situation where um, uh, my suggestion is that a lot of this stuff is going to be addressed fairly quickly. So... Um, anything that's in adjudication, I would suggest, should be put on hold uh, until such time as things are rectified. Whether that happens or not, I don't know yet. Okay? Okay, thank you so much, and um, kudos to all of you. Thank you. I'll let you take the next caller. Thank you very much. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Bye-bye. Um, uh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh well, a lot of people are still answering. <laughs> when the mass arrests start, Drake, will the reporting of these mass arrests immediately start? Will it be on local news stations or m mainstream stations? It's probably going to be the mainstream, I would think. But <laughs> I think it's going to just hit, hit like a big splash of water in all directions. I just uh, said green light a couple of times and then went everywhere. And so I'm just going to suggest that when they see this, that everybody's going to go, yes, get her done, you know, and just have a big old party. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I see this as, as a real positive. I, I really like the uh, the fact that we can finally get, look towards something to celebrate. Um, I, I, I get to finally put my guns down. Uh, go, go down. <laughs> that means go a lot. Out. I know that my grandkids are going to have a future. I mean, you know, there's a lot that goes into this. So Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's a... It, it's a a good sign in. Maybe we all, all go hit the fireworks stand, you know? 
You can do that. Let's run them out of fireworks and, and then set it all off at a certain time or something. Uh, well, didn't we have a pots and pans terrorist brigade? Oh, yeah. And, and did you not say that uh, church bells will be rung? Ah, uh, yes. i got to make a phone call. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just a reminder. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let the military designate as the one uh, they consider us free. And uh, that will be the point where you're going to start hearing the bells ring. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's see. We have another caller. Uh, yep. I have a call. I have a call, Denise. I have a call, Denise. Hold on. Okay. Let me go. It's Ralph, Ralph. but it's, it's bopping in. I don't, Ralph, you can try to talk, but my computer is Okay, back. can you hear me okay? Ah, yes. Perfect. Okay. All right. Yeah. Computers right. are simple, you know. You just smack them upside the head and they speak good English. <laughs> speak up, though, caller, please. You're a little bit mo- you're a little bit quiet. Okay. Am I on now? Yes, yeah. you are, sir. Okay. Great. Yeah, Drake. I just wanted to say uh, thanks from me and my wife. I guess we've been listening to you since the first week of April, and I can't tell you how many times she's looked at me and says, "This has got to happen today." This has got to happen tomorrow. It's got to happen now. <laughs> I said, you're starting to sound like Drake now. But, Drake, my my, uh, my biggest question of concern, I guess, is a little selfish on my part, but I was hoping this thing would happen, uh, you know, weeks ago or now later. But now my son is getting married in St. Louis uh, this coming Saturday and planning to leave to go to the Bahamas uh, Sunday morning. Okay. Do you know what's going to happen as far as the airlines? I mean, uh, well, uh, I don't know when. Oh, I'm not sure exactly when, but I can tell you that uh, international travel is going to be shut down uh, for a period of about uh, 72 hours. This will give them the time necessary to make sure that uh, um, they don't use satellites or any other means to uh, loot the bank accounts, etc. Uh, this will also. Uh, keep the bad guys where they can snatch them, and things of this nature. This is according to the plan I was given uh, years ago that they said was still in uh, place and is supposed to be uh, acted upon. So um, you could, you might get a couple of extra days in the Bahamas. I mean, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know. Uh, yeah, they're, they're planning on being there for a week. So, you know, I mean, July 4th is going to be right in the middle of their well, that'd be, uh, That ought to be perfect. I mean, you know, the Bahamas can celebrate with us, too, you know. So, yeah, maybe I ought to just send a little extra cash with him and tell him to enjoy himself, huh? There you go. There you go. Why not? Ralph, thank you very much. Um, uh, We have a little less than, or about 17 minutes left, and we have lots of callers waiting in the queue. Did you have another question? Uh, No, I just, uh, if you didn't know anything else about the military in St. Louis, then... Uh, no, that was my only question. Okay. Thank you so much, Ralph. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I I have Susan in the queue. You ready for Susan? Hello? Hold on. I'm just hitting the button. There she is. Susan, are you there? Oh, wait a minute. I had the wrong one. I'm, I apologize. Uh, Susan, are you there? Yes, I am. Ah, welcome. Thank you. Drake. Um, I'm calling from Colorado, where our whole state is on fire, and we do have C-130 bombers dropping water. They're working really hard. But um, someone called about the Queen of England, another person about the Vatican. I would like to know what's going to happen to our present president, and will there be an election in November? (laughs) Uh, Now you're getting into an area that I'm not supposed to be talking a whole lot about, but I will elucidate slightly. Um, Obama does not have very much respect. The military has not been listening to him for quite some time. And um, according to some of the information I have, uh, the man's going to have some serious problems. And that's about all I can say. But will there be an election? Are we going to have an election in November? Well, it's, I would I will suggest this. Uh, 
I don't think that we need to worry about uh, November so much as the next few days. If the military has oh, given okay. me the fight, then I would suggest that uh, we're probably going to get somebody like Jesse Ventura, uh, Judge Napolitano, uh, Ron Paul, uh, people of that nature running things. And uh, I would suggest we're going to straighten, straighten things up pretty quick. Thank you very much. Love this program. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Okay. Um, Kimberly, would you like me to bring in Dwayne? Okay, I'll bring in Dwayne. Dwayne, you are live with Drake. Thank you very much for allowing me on the program. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the work that you people have put into this. It's uh, quite amazing. My question is, uh, if the green light is given, that usually means, or uh, I understood that to mean that that's 24 hours. I'm sure there are a lot of us out there that are wondering whether or not we're going to be getting our paychecks, uh, which come on the 29th, uh, which would be Friday. And there's a lot of us that live on the shoestrings. Uh, do you have any comments on that? Uh, yeah, uh, primarily things are going to stay pretty much as they are until such time as things can be uh, reorganized and um, uh, restructured. So um, people who um, people who work for a living probably won't have too much to look at other than the fact that uh, certain things are going to change in their paycheck, which they're going to like. As far as um, Social Security, uh, veterans benefits, things of that nature, my understanding was that those were to be continued um, and uh, also uh, realigned a little bit. Now, whether that means increased, decreased, uh, adjusted, I don't know exactly. Uh, from what I understand, in order not to create chaos, they want to leave things alone and not cause ripples. So you can probably look at normalcy other than the fact that you won't have idiots in charge. That sounds very good. Thank you very much. Uh, I, you may have commented on this. I did not catch the first part of the program, but uh, could you comment on the presidential order that was put up on the website yesterday? Uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty simple. I covered that in the first part of the show. Uh, the only reason that was uh, given was to create a state of emergency to uh, uh, implement uh, extra presidential powers, and those presidential powers are in the process of being taken away, so therefore it's a moot point. Okay? Very good. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very really much, appreciate Dwayne. Work. Oh. Yep, thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dwayne. Okay, okay. Here's, here's the deal. You guys can hear me? Yes, we can. We have uh, 10, 11, 12 minutes left. And there are lots of questions in the queue. And I'm going to tell you that there are a lot of people with their hands raised, and I apologize that we're not going to get to you. Um, however, ultimately, we have a few people in the queue, and we're going to bring you in. And I will just say that we do have the option to go a little bit over, and it goes into the archive. So I'm going to try to cut it off as close to the three-hour mark as possible, but I'm just saying that if we do go a little bit over, the people who are listening live will miss a couple of minutes, but it will be in the archive. And just for information's sake, there are more people that listen to the archive than listen to it live. So, like, by double. <laughs> okay? Okay, we'll thank you. Okay. Okay, so here we have Paul is next. Hey, Paul. Hello. Hi, hey, Drake. What's going on? <laughs> Every time. That's a silly question. But that. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Everything's going on. That's what. That, yeah, that's what I hear. Very exciting times. I'm very excited to hear all this great news coming out. Um, I spoke to you a couple weeks back. Uh, you kind of addressed a question about bankruptcies. Um, I just want to find out if those are. If there's going to be any need to make uh, future payments on that, or should we just kick that to the curb and. Mm -hmm. Say, say la vie. Um, I would continue with the with the programs that you've got running, whatever it might be, uh, whether that's regular bills or what. Uh, and uh, these things will be sorted uh, sorted out in short order, as I understand it. So, uh, be prepared for um, <laughs> all kinds of nice things. Put it that way. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. And uh, second uh, question, uh, Nasara. 
Uh, you mentioned that quite a bit, but I, have, I don't think I've heard any mention of that in this program today. Um, Nasera um, is the issue that's being denied, uh, even though it was passed and uh, signed by a president. Uh, it is required to be brought up, uh, and that's one of the reasons I was bringing it up, trying to educate people as to its uh, authenticity that is really there. And uh, as I said, the, the change in the legal system uh, or justice system, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, is going to be such that these things will come out. Uh, the people will get a chance to look at Nasera. Um there's going to be some offers of uh, um, amendments to it. Um, the original design was for a uh, national sales tax, which, and people don't like that four-letter word tax. Uh, the more uh, equitable solution to that would be a user fee uh, where you pay, you know, like a toll road type of deal uh, that would cover the expense according to the number of vehicles that use the road, that particular road, as an example. Um, those costs, uh, you know, will not be a property tax, but a user tax or user fee, uh, rather than tax at all. Now, uh, in other words, uh, many of the taxes that we are used to will disappear. A lot of things will be changed too. So, there's a variety of things in Nasera. I suggest you look at the uh, history of Nasera. Uh, that'll give you your best shot at knowing what it uh, contains. My understanding is that it does have the original uh, documentation, and it's supposed to be introduced. So that's it. And uh, one final question here. I uh, live near a military base, and uh, within the last couple of days I've been seeing a lot of uh, air traffic. Uh, they basically uh, fly around us in a circular pattern. Does that have anything to do with, uh, you know, the events that are unfolding? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> kind of figured as much. I saw them uh, buzzing around here quite a bit more than normal uh, for the last few nights, so uh, that's encouraging. I think All so. Right. I look. Uh, yep. I look at it as a positive uh, deal. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for all you've done and uh, sticking with this. And I just appreciate it. My family appreciates it, and especially my uh, little three-year-old is going to have a bright future. Exactly. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Thank you so much, Drake. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Paul. And I'm going to say, well, we'll see how long the question goes, but Melissa's the last one in the queue here, and so I'm bringing Melissa in. Hello, Melissa. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you to everyone for persevering for this cause. Um, I just have a question on uh, Social Security and Medicare, and how does that affect those people that are on it? Um, you shouldn't. Uh, I don't think the, a lot of people are going to notice too much difference right away. Uh, there may be some adjustments or changes at a later date. Now, what you have to remember is that there are a lot of things that have to be uh, reorganized, specifically financially. Uh, that deal with these things. There are ways to cause um, entities such as Social Security and the uh, Department of Defense to be self-supportive um, in terms of uh, generation of funds. Uh, these are recommendations that I've already made, and uh, hopefully they'll uh, be considered. Um, so, um, as I said, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of detail, uh, specifically financial that uh, can't come out for the next few days yet. Okay. Thank you so much for your answer. You're welcome. We got more questions? I don't know, Drake. Let me, let me see if I see anyone else in the queue here. I think pretty much everybody figured they weren't going to be able to get a question in. <laughs> Okay. I thought we were out of time. Did you have any closing statements you needed to make, Drake? Um, <laughs> we well, uh, yes, I think we got a bright and shining future. Uh, when I say green light, I mean it, it, uh, apparently the military uh, does not need our assistance as of yet. If they want us to 
uh, go any further with uh, the the facts, um, then uh, they probably will contact me either directly or indirectly. And um, as soon as I uh, get those, um, I'll be posting all of this stuff uh, uh, as soon as I get the information. I will try to get it out as, out to as many people as is possible, and uh, I'm not shy about uh, approaching somebody. So uh, we'll see what uh, what happens. Now, I will make the suggestion: uh, <laughs> the people that do know uh, or have a considerable knowledge of how things work in terms of the responsibilities of freedom, uh, both individually and uh, collectively. We're going to need each and every last one of you. The other thing we're going to need a load of are CPAs, somebody that already knows basic books and can help us go through that mess called the IRS. The uh, issuance of currency is going to come through the Treasury Department, and anything in form of uh, fees, et cetera, as I understand it, will be run through uh, a division of that same department, as it was originally intended to be. You can look for the um, central banking system to go out, both uh, in Europe and in the United States in the very near future. I don't know how soon, uh, but it uh, looks like it's going to be sooner than later. So uh, we can look toward, forward to that. The problems with the basics of the structure of the banking systems that we have are that they are consumer-oriented. What this means is the Ponzi-type uh, multi-layer uh, bringing new money to pay the old is eating them up alive rapidly. So you're going to have disassociations by certain uh, people who have um, great wealth uh, in relation to the financial institutions that they either own or deal with. So there's a lot of things that are um, getting ready to take place. and. Um, as I said before, if the military needs anything at all, they got my phone number. I know that. Um, feel free to give me a buzz. Uh, I don't mind making public announcements or whatever position you might uh, deem uh, necessary for me to assist. And I want to thank everybody for uh, being on the call tonight. Uh, sorry that we didn't get all the questions answered, but uh, uh, it's going to... Uh, turn out for the best. I did not expect this to happen this quick. I was hoping it would have happened sooner, but I wasn't really fully expecting it quite yet. Um, I'm glad that it did happen. I'm glad the I was told is thrilled, to today. The world is thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have no idea. And, um, I'd, like, I'd like to publicly thank one person that's uh, been uh, of tremendous help. Uh, she's a teacher, historian, uh, she loves debt collectors. Uh, her name's Terry Hinkle, um, and this is somebody that uh, I uh, have quite high respect for. And um, uh, anybody who wants to know anything about uh, freedom, uh, she has told me she had a couple of shows that she did that were erased, uh, Unalienable Rights and Education. She told me that she's going to uh, look at doing um, YouTubes of those uh, shows. She's still got the scripts. And uh, she's looking at uh, allowing us to uh, post these on, on all our websites so that people get an, edu an education and understanding as to how things are, how they can be changed, and what we can look forward to being able to do with them. So that's something that uh, people might be aware of. That's Thank basically you so everything much. I've got. Thank you. Um, uh, real quick, uh, uh, Kimberly, did we have one more quick question we were going to try and squeeze in? Well, you know, we could go over. Uh, okay, um, well, before just, we actually, run out of okay, before we run out of recording time, I I want to publicly thank 
um, um, my team members here with the Global Voice 2012, and that's Paul Thompson in Colorado and Terry Ambach in Washington, and um, without whom all of this would not have been possible. Um, we, we are, I think we have a wonderful team of people. And uh, recently here, the Global Voice 2012.us uh, website has gone through some changes. We want to thank um, uh, um, everyone who has helped us to um, make this, trans once again, another transition, but it's only so that we can facilitate everyone. Um, and um, we have got, uh, you know, the new chat room up, um, and we are connected with Drake, and Drake's website is AmericanNationalMilitia.com. Um, everyone is invited to go there. And our website, uh, which is, is now uh, kind of cross-referenced with Drake's, is GlobalVoice2012.us. And um, uh, we look forward to um, uh, being able to communicate much much clearer and, and uh, you know, with much more uh, flair than we have in the last week or so. So, but anyway, wanted to thank everybody. Okay, let's. Uh, if we have another caller, Kimberly, let's bring them on in. Yeah, actually, that's great. Captain, are you still there? Uh, yes, I am, Kimberly. Yeah, you know what? And here's the deal. I just want to say this because um, there were about six thousand people on the live call. We're now into the over, which will be recorded. But we typically get twice that, if not more, in the archives. So this isn't in the live call, and so other people may not come back and listen to this, but twice as many people hear this. So this is going to be the last question, and Captain, go for it. Okay. All right. Uh, Drake? Uh, yes? I want, yeah, I want to ask you a question concerning about uh, Lady, uh, Lady Dragon. Uh, I okay. listened to a call last. I listened to a call last night, and she said something very interesting about President Obama. She said that President Obama did what is what is called a checkmate on the cabal. And should I uh, have some second thoughts about uh, President Obama thinking that uh, he pulled a checkmate on the cabal, keeping them from obtaining money? for uranium. So what is your thought about President Obama? I think he's in more trouble than he knows what to do with. Um, he sided with Eric Holder. That's not a good place to be. Uh, he's been ignored by the military because they do not consider him commander-in-chief. And um, he's committed uh, several treasonous crimes uh, during his administration. So uh, my suggestion is that he's not uh, a cool person to uh, deal with. One of the reasons that he declared this, emer this state of emergency was to confiscate our guns by the use of foreign troops uh, under the U.N. insignia. Uh, I don't know uh, how to express it other than uh, if you talk to a combat veteran and ask him uh, how they would feel about that, uh, you'd get a new uh, explosive deletable probably, and that would be my uh, personal take on the man myself. Well, well, uh, well, Drake, I, I would like to say this. Uh, I, I come to uh, to realize that uh, I believe that uh, I'm not going to agree with you on this one because I think uh, this this president is uh, is definitely working for the light, and I think you're going to find that to be so. Well, then the only question I've got is why did he steal $40 billion from us? That's one question. Number two, why is he going directly against the freedoms of this of the people of this country? And number three, well, if you so... Uh, that, right? What? How do you know that? How do you know that he stole $40 I do. billion? Dollars? You, don't, you don't understand. Uh, if need be, I can get the account number. I know the people that are watching this man. Uh, number two, the man is uh, very close to being uh, attended to by force for his activities. Oh, I see. You tell I me, see. You tell me so, that the man's a period, and I'll tell so you that. Uh, 
So are, he's not. Okay, so are you saying that? Okay, so are you saying that uh, Obama is a crook and a treasonous Absolutely. and a lot? I'm sorry, Drake. I, I wasn't. I wasn't going to listen to it anymore. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm. Uh, no. I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to attend to the answer. Absolutely. The man's dirty in a whole lot of different ways. Now, if you want to, if somebody wants to get into this, uh, I'll suggest that the executive uh, privilege does not apply to the Eric Holder problem unless Mr. Obama ordered it. And in that case, he's guilty of treason. You do not sell guns to crooks, especially those who will use them. Uh, this was uh, not Eric Holder's idea. Now, that much I've found out already. If I can get the documentation that proves this, I will present it, just like I've presented other documentation. So in the next few days, we'll see exactly where this all leads. However, Drake, I have a question. The United sure. States of America has been selling guns to crooks <laughs> for <laughs> a very long time. And you can expect to end immediately. <laughs> okay. And we're not going to be doing that. We're not in a, uh, um, as I stated before, war is passe. And by that I mean that um, the idea of war is twofold. Uh, the people that make the munitions make money. Yes. And uh, they reduce the population at the same time. Uh, right. This is United Nations Agenda 21 horse hockey. Um the people that have profited from all of these things that have been done are going to be stripped, naked, and I mean that literally. They're not hopefully going to have squat. So. Hopefully so. Oh, no, oh, no. This is not just uh, hopefully so. This is a statement of fact that I know is going to take place. I, uh, I love anything, that. As anything that has come illicitly to anyone is going to be returned. Just that simple. So... You know, that sort of does a number on a whole bunch of these people. Now, the location of the bank account is in Canada, and it's got $40 billion in it that belongs to the United States taxpayers, not Michelle, who happens to be the account holder. There are also a couple of accounts in the Cayman Islands that I know about. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of outing the man, um, when the world leaders turn their back on the guy, at a, at a world leaders meeting, irrespective as to whether it's D20 or what it is, and refuse to shake the man's hand. And I got the video. Uh, that tells me that he does not have any respect of anybody outside uh, his own little clique. So, you, you know, this has got to a point where uh, the idea of kings and queens is done in terms of rulership of uh, people for uh, the enjoyment of the ruler, this, the, those times are done. They're over. This is what we. This is what the importance of what we're doing here now is. This will set the planet free, and as our freedom comes, with it comes great responsibility. Um, just about anybody that you can think of, and I got a list of twenty names here uh, that are all guilty of. Um, Financial terrorism. Um, George Soros comes to mind. Uh, Jamie Dimon that stole money for J.P. Morgan to pay their operating expenses. I mean, look at Kissinger. Um, you know, it goes. The, the list goes on and on. Um, um, I mean, why is George Bush, Bush still alive? I'd really like to have an answer to that one. That man should have been executed for uh, the crimes he committed of uh, our. Uh, attacking sovereign nations for no other, no good reason other than profit. So you know, there, this is not a, a, a simple and easy. This is not going to be a simple, easy thing to deal with. Um, people can forget the idea of socialism; it's dead. According to the military, they're going to wipe it out. Hallelujah. This includes, this <laughs> includes any and all organizations that have any dealings of that nature be it the uh, Anti-Defamation League, be it the lobbyists, doesn't matter. You're going, and it's up to you as to whether you go nice or you go rough. 
the military would just as soon get some exercise and like to take out some of their frustrations on somebody who would resist. So I wouldn't suggest that would be a good idea. Now, these people that think they're cool, Paul Volcker, uh, Barney Frank, um, Carl Rove, uh, Richard Armitage, uh, Lawrence Summon, uh, uh, Hank Paulson, uh, Warren Buffett, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, the Rockefellers. Uh, the Rockefellers are the ones that pushed for this friggin' uh, uh, UN thing in terms of the troops. They told the uh, Department of Homeland, Homeland, Homeland Security, they told the Department of Homeland Security to go bring them in and that they were to disarm us. Well, if that ain't treasonous, I don't know what is. Um, you know, it, it, um, it just, you know, it, it's not a pretty thing. I don't like the idea, but uh, the people have been screwed around so much that a lot of people are sold on the idea that uh, somebody owes them something. And that couldn't be further from the truth unless you earned what it is that you are being supplied with. In my case, I am disabled. And I mean physically, among other things. Um, that was no fault of my own, but through military service. There are many people out there who have lost limbs, etc., that can do more than I can. Uh, if I exert myself the wrong way, uh, I physically collapse. And so I'm not, I can't do that. Um, the people that are getting Social Security because they are truly disabled, uh, that's a different deal than somebody who's playing the system. The people that are gaming the system uh, are going to come up against some problems. And there are tests to prove whether or not a person is da disabled the way they say they are. Um, <laughs> as an example, uh, the idea that the um, Supreme Court was ordered by the Federal uh, Reserve Banks to uh, put a gag order on the SARA means that the Supreme Court goes, we need new justices because those are dirty. Uh, just that simple. Uh, yeah. There's nothing complicated in this, uh, but you do. It's going to. It, okay. There's a lot of work to be done in terms of slogging through the mess to get to the point where we can actually uh, breathe easy and know, you know, that everything is going to be right. Um, it's going to take an extraordinary amount of work. So this is one of the reasons I'm explaining this. And as soon as I hear uh, financial news, and I hope to hear that in the next few days. Um, by Sunday, I hope to have a dynamite show again. It won't be quite as heavy hitting as this, but it'll be close. <laughs> Drake, I just need to ask this question because a lot of people are asking this question that I see in my various social networks and uh -huh. connections. You, you talk about executions. Yeah. I, I personally am not in favor of execution. And I just would like perhaps for you to clarify that because I am one who's not in favor of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Um, and I know that there are a lot of other people who have this question. That's, that's what I would like to ask. Okay, I'll give you a full explanation. Um, you have people that uh, we have uh, worked with, and I'm talking about mankind has worked with, who are re who can be rehabilitated. Um, it takes a combination of uh, in-house while they're being held, which is intensive training or rehabilitation, and also a partnership and a support mechanism outside of that whatever institution they might be involved with. Some of these people can be treated on an outpatient basis. They're not all that bad. They just need to be adjusted a little bit in terms of the manner in which they think about things and their actions they take. Um, now, <laughs> I'm going to give you a definition. Um, and the definition uh, is common among every belief system I've come across. And that that is that uh, evil has nothing to do with the light. 
This is a very common concept. The darkness doesn't have anything to do with the light. The darkness flees the light and that sort of thing. Um, there are people who are still breathing today that I would personally execute without hesitance. And I'm going to qualify that. Um, when you look into a person's eyes, it is a window, window to the soul or spirit. Yes. And when you look into a person's eyes and you see nothing but darkness and death, or even just a black hole, you understand that that person is totally, irretrievably evil. Meaning they will do anything that they feel like they want to, according to their whim at the moment, with anybody of any age, doesn't matter. I've met a few of these personally and executed them personally. On the battlefield in Vietnam, I met a couple of them that you looked into their eyes and it was, it was a dark hole. Now, <laughs> the reason I knew that there was reason to look into their eyes was because of what they had just done. They went through a village of varying aged people from babies to old people and hacked them up while they were alive in little pieces because they thought it was funny. Now, oh I'm sorry, but uh, some people need to be beheaded quickly, more quickly than others. I don't want to name you a name, and it's a well-known name. You take a close look into the man's eyes, and you'll see what I'm talking about. That man's name is Dick Cheney. There's yeah. another one. His boss, George Bush, you look into his eyes, and it's a dark hole. Now, I have been in contact, as everybody knows, with ETs, uh, varying different levels. So, I'm going to elucidate. The ETs uh, handle the spiritual end of things at this point. We are a combination of physicality, which is your biological function, to uh -huh. include your intellect, which is your soul, yeah. um, which is called life. The spirit's inserted after these functions are uh, mature enough to handle insertion of the spirit. <clears throat> the spirit has a determination, the good or the evil. You remember that apple or whatever it was that somebody ate in the garden? Yeah. This gives the choice. This gives the um, contrast. You do not have to have darkness in order to have light, nor do you have to have light in order to have darkness. Um, it's not a contrast in that sense of the word. It's a contrast of existence. Now, when I saw the darkness in that particular individual's eyes, I didn't even hesitate. I just blew their brains all over the ground. And there was a few survivors. And <laughs> even though they were messed up, they applauded. Some of them were like grandmas. Some of them were little babies. Babies didn't applaud, of course. But um, these people will cut chunks out of a baby to hear it screech because they think that noise is a turn-on. This is the same kind of person that uh, commits sex crimes against juveniles, little bit, little, little kids. This is the same kind of person that uh, I caught trying to getting ready to disembowel a friend of mine who happened to be a village chief because he refused to cooperate with their their communist um, ideology that uh, they could take anything they wanted. Uh, we had a little battle with machetes, and the guy lost terribly, very slowly over a long period of time. Um, I don't have any qualms about shedding somebody's uh, life or their blood and making them feel the same pain that they were getting ready to inflict on someone else when those eyes are empty, dead. And E.T. looks at it the same way. They take them, and if they can be re rehabilitated, they work on them. And they don't ever give up. They've got all the time in the world. <laughs> and to give you an example, I heard that Hitler is still being worked on. Apparently, he can be rehabilitated. 
which is, you know, he's insane and a few other little minor problems. Um, <laughs> minor. <laughs> yeah, well, the souls, the, the, everybody confuses soul, which is life, with spirit. When the uh, biological is ended, the spirit continues, just as it always has. The um, angels catch it, catch that spirit, calm it down, because it's usually not used to the idea of what's going on, instruct it so that it knows what's what's happening. And um, then there's a decision made as to whether it should be reinserted, where, and to what purpose. Generally, a life uh, such as ours is intended to teach the spirit uh, certain things about itself, how it's to act or how it's to perform or what ideologies it's to hold, manners of teaching it's never run across, and all that. And um, the um, the thing that um, you'll find is that when you turn off the biological entity, the spirit is still there. Uh, if anybody has had a close relative who's died, then um, the uh, spiritual entity can visit you any time. They'll look like they just they look the same as they did when you knew them. Uh, generally, uh, not much difference other than the fact that you can probably see through them. That can be a little disturbing. Um, sometimes they manifest or come into reality to the point where they can actually have physical impacts in our uh, realm of existence. Uh, most of the time they don't, but they can visit. Um, the spirits that are nasty, and Dick Cheney would be a good candidate, are disassembled in little chunks and pieces. Um, I think they're put into some sort of spiritual blender, but I'm not. I don't quote me on that. Uh, where this is where they're remixed a little bit, then they're disassembled again, and they take chunks and pieces from I don't know. I guess thousands of uh, other spirits, recombine them into a new spirit, and God sends it back to be reinserted into another uh, new life. So the idea of um, actually killing somebody, you can't. We're not capable. Uh, God merely reassembles, disassembles, and reassembles the spiritual uh, forms uh, that need that particular action. All the rest of them are rehabilitated, if they can be. So the people need to understand that there are differences between what they've been taught in uh, religious uh, or belief systems and what the realities are. Now, E.T. or angels or whatever you want to call these beings are supposed to um, um, educate us in these facts. And I'm, I quite honestly am just looking forward and hungry for that that uh, um, it's hard to express. Drake, there was um, one other question um, regarding ETs and, and the technology, et cetera, uh, for, like, healing the sick. Um, and, you know, there, like some people have family and friends that are dying of cancer, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, they, were, they were asking, very importantly, um, if we know how long before we may have the technology. I know that was usually a stretch to know, but okay. um, realistically. The healing technology goes all the, all the way to the point of actually regenerating limbs that we've lost. Um, the change in terms of the ascension, as it's called, the change of realms of existence, are supposed to have, have happened anywhere between fall of 20, uh, 2011 and spring of 2013. In between that time, after the military gets done doing their thing, it was supposed, the second part of it comes out called disclosure. Disclosure means that all of the hidden and secret and suppressed technologies are to be made fully available to everybody. This includes a combination of healing machines that I've also des designed and worked on, 
as well as ones that are even um, um, completely unknown or still yeah yeah unknown to general man or whatever yeah yeah they've probably so, been developed many many years ago and and, and just been suppressed. Well, the, it, some forms of it, yes, but we're li- you got to remember that we are limited in this existence in what we can accomplish, either technolo- technologically or as a society. This is a training ground. Uh, it's a big test. Um, a lot of the situations are put together for the benefit of uh, specifics. Wanna, uh, <laughs> and I want to apologize to our caller, Captain. Uh, you know, I... I you know, I cut him off, uh, but he was kind of like talking over you and 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 everything. Um, um, <laughs> um, I was going to bring him back on the line, uh, but he hung up. So. Okay. Well, um, the problem is is that you have um, um, extraordinarily misplaced loyalties for whatever reason. Um, I wish that it was um, possible to um, for me to come out with all this stuff right now, but I can't. Um, it won't be very much longer, and all the truth will be known. So there's not going to be anything hidden. Um, <laughs> uh, and that's going to really um, – there's uh, all the crooks, crimes, what a day that'll everybody's be. dirty, everybody's done something wrong. Um, along with the truth in terms of who we are, where we come from, uh, true spiritual belief, uh, the whole nine yards, it's going to happen by spring of, supposedly it's supposed to happen by spring of uh, 2013. Now, I understand that the uh, that you're given a choice. You can either go along with that program and, stand and go to a higher realm of existence or stay within the, this dimensional realm that we have now. If you decide to stay within this dimensional realm that we have now, you have to be relocated because our planet is going through um, the same change that we are. It's going from third level to fifth level. Part of the thing that we need to do is to um, attend to our planet. She needs a great amount of healing and cleaning up and tending to a whole lot of TLC, so to speak. Um, The more that we do for our planet before our true ascension, the less the convulsiveness of the planet. (coughs) So if we don't like the idea of having extraordinary earthquakes and tsunamis and other problems as some movies have put out, um, then... um, as we start making these efforts, even though it might just be a start, that's basically all it takes. Because then the intent, and purpose, and uh, what we are in, will do, will be shown, and that's primarily what it takes. And Drake, so, I would like to interject, if, if it's okay, is that we are in the time of the apocalypse, and the word apocalypse, if you Google it, research it, the word apocalypse means the um the, the the thinning of the veil, the revelation, um, the revealing of that that has been withheld from us. And we are in the <laughs> you know, we are directly in the time of the apocalypse. Unfortunately, the word apocalypse was given a kind of a uh, not kind of a was given a negative connotation of of disaster but that's not the true meaning of the word apocalypse the, the true meaning of the word apocalypse and I invite everyone to research it from the, for themselves is that it's the time of the unveiling and the revealing of that which has been withheld from us and that is fascinating and also, if you get into the astrology, uh, there are so many different points, but we are moving into a golden age mm-hmm. for those who choose to be on that path. And yes, there are those who will choose to be on a path of doom and gloom, but there are those that are going to participate in a path of 
he's on earth. And that is so important to remember because one is not better than the other. It's just personal choice, free will, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the the thing about the uh, apocalyptic nature of things that have happened or that people have seen are going to happen, there is going to be some convulsion, um, whether anybody likes it or not. The changes are drastic enough that if there is not, or certain things are not attended to, um, the convulsions will be worse than were they attended to. Now, if you're just even starting to attend to them, Mother Earth has a capability to accept that as having been being done or completed. And this is a part of the creational capability of the planet um, that a lot of people uh, are not are unaware of. One of the things that needs to be attended to is the ancient energy grid. <coughs> the other one is the uh, res restoration of uh, certain objects in certain places so that the um, uh, pivot points would be a good description can operate correctly. Um, you also have what are called um, attenuation points that are that have either obelisks or um, small uh, stone piles, uh, etc. Et um, these all some of these also need attended to. The um, uh, people that, um, if I'm if I'm correct about it, I'm thinking you got your information from about the word apocalypse. Also, I have a uh, an extraordinary uh, bit of information about uh, Stonehenge, and uh, a lot of people don't understand the importance of it. Um, a lot of people do not understand. Uh, the uh, pyramid complex at Giza. Uh, most people are not aware of the uh, energy complex in terms of the energy grid that uh, we've disrupted, uh, in some cases purposely because it interfered with uh, radio or TV broadcasts. Um, there's a whole lot of things that are going to have to change, and so long as we are in the process of attending to these, those convulsiveness problems will be lessened, okay? ETs or angels can also control these to an extent, but they're not they do not have absolute control. Most of it is going to be up to the entity known as Gia. And I recommend that everybody start being consciously aware of the living entity of the planet. Um the Celtics had a um initiation that deals directly with that that I've been through and Gia and I are in constant contact and believe me it's extraordinary um, everything everything in the woods is your friend nothing bites you <laughs> to include you know uh, hornets wasps doesn't matter what it is uh, fleas ticks they leave you alone I mean it's, it's you know everything is your friend um, it's just it, it's welcoming um, it's an extraordinary, extraordinary situation. What I want to do is get done with what we're doing to an extent where I can take my permanent vacation. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's what I'm shooting for. So, but if I can be of service in some way, um, you know, if somebody needs me to, to assist, I have no problem with it. So, you know, I don't have anything else to, to add unless you do. Um, uh, somebody has more questions or something of that nature. No, I just I guess I would like for you to again reiterate that we're at green light. I think that's important. Yeah, I'd say it is. Um, I've been putting it in the chat just Ladies because it's fun to watch them all. It's a green, green light. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm going to post that on my website uh, and, uh, you know, that uh, actually, I don't need to really post it. I think it's covered in the show pretty well. No, you and do think... need to post it because there are well, people. You missed who it. Yes. <laughs> you missed it, Kimberly. But he he said, "Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is a green light." <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a little bit. I felt the I felt the um, 
internet move when I said that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you do a Google search of Drake Green Light, uh, uh, there uh, are about, well, it says uh, 8,360 results in 0.29 seconds. Okay. So, and we're yeah. not even done with the show yet. <laughs> no, and it's, you know, it, it, it's plastered everywhere already. They're they're having follow-up radio shows with the after party. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, green light party over here, green light party over there. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. And Grammy J, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. You bet you I am. Better. You can't get rid of her that easy. No, baby. Oh, I, I'm your baby sister. That's right. You're my older brother. I have to be respectful. Uh, and you made me wait on this. I am so upset with you. I'm coming to West Jenny. <laughs> oh, I hear my sister, Ellen, in the background. She's here. Oh, it's here. Uh huh. And you both gave me a rough time earlier today when I tried to get this out of you both. <laughs> That's more uh, shame I've on you. I yeah. had it must have been a long time. Yes, I know this. I could tell you and Ellen were having fun with me this morning, yeah. and I did not like it. Well, you think I like not being able to tell anybody about my wife? Yes, I know that, baby. He told me not to say nothing until showtime. I said, "Oh, you got to be kidding! I got to do that. I got to shut up for six hours and can't say Yahoo." Jeez. Yeah, you couldn't even tell your little sis. Nope. Nope. Well, that's and okay because I understand, but I'm still mad. <laughs> can't help what you do. <laughs> just don't. Just leave the broom at home, okay? Uh, it, uh, well, I don't know. Ellen's got a broom. I've got one. We've all got a. Broom. I'm gonna go live in the woods. Yeah, we all have we all have a few brooms we can come after you with, but uh, this was a jaw dropper, Drake. I thought everybody'd like it. Remember well, I, said that I was, uh, and you know, T's birthday is the Fourth of July, baby. So you just gave such an honor to my sons who were murdered by the cabal. My God, the Great Spirit has a reason for all things, Drake. Boom. Yep, it's going to be a wonderful for us for the world. For the oh, world. I can't wait. This world is going to be better for the little ones, I, and that's what I this is I, all about. Absolutely. I wish I had uh, an appropriate song to play when we close out. Um, I, I've, I've got a couple on here that we could we could play. I've got a... Uh, well, I see. love the the one you used to play at the beginning of the show, We Are the World. We are the world. I've got that. I've got that, and I've got... Okay, you uh, can play the full version. Why don't you... Are we yeah, ready we to close out? We can play the full version. We can play um, the full version of that, or, uh, you know, the only other one I really have that's appropriate is I'm Free by the Who. Oh, how about We Are the World? We Are the World is more important. Yeah, I think that's much more fitting. Okay, so are we ready to close out? Because I will... Oh, yeah. you know, Okay, well, uh, we would just like to tell the world uh, that uh, we we love you all and love and light and happiness to all. And uh, we will, if, if not before, um, Global Voice Radio, if there's anything that you need to know, Drake is, we are prepared to come live with Drake at, at any time. Yep. Um and uh and we'll do so if there's anything that you need to know um and uh if not uh, uh we will meet you with beer and popcorn uh <laughs> on our sunday show uh, i'll have my crown royal there you go <laughs> i opened my bottle of